This is Borders Rugby Special on Borders Rugby Radio with Stuart Cameron. Hello, welcome to Netherdale for this week's Borders Rugby Special on Borders Rugby Radio. I'm Stuart Cameron. We're on the air throughout the next three hours to bring you the latest score updates and live commentary from our feature match today between Unbeaten Gala and Unbeaten Kelso in National 2. It's also a Border League match, so plenty at stake today and the added spice into the mixes at Kelso last one here 16 years ago. Well, I'm going to have a chat with the coaches in a minute, but uh, there was an early kickoff today at the Green Yards an hour ago in the Super 6 Southern Knights last match of the season against Sterling Wolves and uh, we can cross over for a halftime update from Alan Lorimer. The halftime score at the Green Yards is Southern Knights 19, Sterling Wolves 0. Contrary to what the scoreline might suggest, Knights were under huge pressure in the opening 10 minutes but their defence stood firm and thereafter it was Knights who were on the front foot, scoring excellent tries by wing Aidan Cross, flanker Sam Derrick and prop Michael Mbode with two conversions from fullback David Colvin. So a, sec- a good second half in prospect with Knights obviously chasing the, the bonus point try. Halftime score again at the Green Yards, Southern Knights 19, Sterling Wolves 0. So a good start for the Southern Knights there, 19 uh, 0 at the Green Yards. Alan Lorimer will return to him a little bit later on uh, down there at the Green Yards. Well, we start our build up to the big top of the table clash by chatting with the two coaches. We'll begin with Stuart Johnson, head coach of the Maroons. And Stuart, uh, you and the club in a good place at the moment. Yeah, look, we've had a really good start to the season. It's uh, it's positive. We're five from five with four bonus points. So uh, look, it couldn't have started any better, really. So, uh, and as you said, it comes down to today with uh, both teams unbeaten. Team news for us: we've got uh, fly half Harris Rutherford returning. Yes, I Harris is back. He's had uh, two really good weeks at the Knights, which is obviously just a reward for him from his performances here. Uh, he's also just been announced in the Scotland Under 20s training squad with Taylor Wilson, so it's good to get Harris back at 10. Um, just adds, obviously, hopefully brings his experience to the Knights and builds on his performances that he started with us. And uh, he obviously went well for the Knights for uh, off the bench twice. So no, he'll uh, obviously add a lot to our attacking shape and defensively. And he's obviously got a big boot on him as well, which helps to get out of uh, our half. And you'll probably need it today. It's a wee bit breezy out there. Yeah, it's not too bad, obviously, down on the pitch, um, so hopefully uh, it stays that way and hopefully the rain stays away, but so far it's uh, shaping up for a decent day. Now, we saw uh, last week at Bigger, where, which was your last game, you, you got the points that you, that you wanted. Tamasitas had a, had a hand injury, but he's in the team today, so um, that's obviously proved not as bad as we thought it was. I think from memory he had a little, uh, he got stood on in one of the rucks, but it was just a quick... Um, chat with the physio and that was the end of it it's never been mentioned again so no he's fully fit just um, a wee stamp to go. Then. yes I know no issues at all um, so we have big, big Maris is in the front row with Glenn the prop that we uh, brought down from Orkney who's going really well as well and then uh, Josh Irvin getting his uh, first ever start at hooker fantastic yeah that, that's good now, now what's been the chat all week because obviously you've got this wonderful record against Kelso you know 16 years since they last actually defeated and we'll be talking to Kevin Utterson very very shortly who of course was uh, the person who kicked the winning penalty that, that time back in 2006 and it was 15-12 so obviously confidence is high but you know uh, Kelso have had a very good start to their season yeah, look, we've not mentioned anything really about that uh, record of Kelso. Um, we've just said it's early on in the season, we're just taking it week, week by week. Yes, look, everyone knows the importance of this game in terms of who's going to be at the top of the league come five o'clock. But it's all just about us building week on week, building our performances. We know this is going to be our toughest test to date. Uh, obviously, we ground out a result last week against Bigger. Um, but it's going to be tight again. Uh, I anticipate it'll be pretty tight. So we know that. We just need to match their physicality, play in the right areas, and say stick to our structure and our shape. And that's all we've been speaking about. It's all about us internally, rather than rather than looking at Kelso and that uh, that record of theirs, shall we say. Now, Kelso have kind of been hot and cold a bit, haven't they? You may have seen the Inverleith game uh, against Stuart's Melville, which was uh, uh, they raced to this this huge lead, and, and then Stuart's Melville, they, they let them back into it again. So they're clearly 
still, you know, they'll be the first to admit they're not playing an 80 meter, 80 minute game. Yeah, uh, to be honest, again, I am um, looking at Kelso, the, the bits of homework we have done, um, they do seem to fall off in the last 20 minutes they did against Highland again last week. Whether that's a fitness thing, whether that's a, a mental thing, that I, I only ask care of that. But look, we're just again just focusing on ourselves. Uh, we're not putting in 80 minute performances really yet. I think probably our only GHK, but it wasn't even an 80 minute performance there. We struggled a bit in the first half, and then we came out the second half and uh, put a really good 40 minutes together. Last week we played well in parts, but we went 17 3 up and let Bigger back into the game with two tries, 17 all, then we got two yellow cards. So the one thing we need to work on ourselves is trying to get that eight minute performance, which is what we're looking for today, and trying to keep uh, 15 guys on the pitch at all times as well. Uh, be absolutely. Helpful. Absolutely. And of course, uh, you should have a big crowd today. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, I think um, our crowds are, uh, are usually big at home. Um, from last season, the crowds, as, as we started uh, rising up the league, the crowds always uh, just seemed to get bigger as the, as the season went on. And the good news is that it's carried on from last season and this season. So, yeah, look, Border Derby always do get a, a big big crowd for these. I'm pretty sure there'll be a lot of Kelso supporters down. Um, I was at a wedding last night and there's quite a few Kelso uh, supporters there. So um, it seems like they'll bring a big big crowd as well. But no, it's a good day. And say, as I say, at least the, uh, the rain's away. So that should bring a few more people down as well. Of course, it doubles as a border league as well, which is which is something else, which is uh, you know worth worth looking at. Yes, I um, obviously the border league this season with the uh, the double headers in um, Premiership and that one, and it's only the people's games that's uh, obviously not a double header. So yeah, again, it's probably nothing we've really focused on. Um, look, being a double header, yes, it's there. It's all about just getting through this result, um, getting through the game. As I say, it's a game at the end of the day. It's who wins it. The border league added bonus. OK, well, thank you for your time. You've got to rush back now, I know, onto the pitch. Uh, no sign of Kevin Utterson at the moment, but I'm sure we'll uh, we'll join him very, very, very shortly. But thanks so much indeed to Stuart Johnson. Robin Purdy, of course, in the commentary box today. And uh, we'll be uh, with Neil Hinnigan as well. Um, I say we're still waiting on, on Kevin or one of the Kelso uh, team to, to come up. I'm sure we'll get them very shortly. But uh, you've heard what uh, what Stuart Johnson has had to say. In fact, Kevin Utterson, I can see him at the moment, but I'll just talk to you whilst he's uh, making his way up here. And uh, you've, you've seen Gal a couple of times. You haven't actually seen Kelso live uh, this time, but Gala have impressed you. Yeah, they, they have. They impressed me last season as well, and it's, it's going to be a great game today. Obviously, the two form horses in the league, as, as far as Gala are concerned, I think Stuart's right. You know, Harris Rutherford coming back in, he should be in fine fettle having been in the Knights for a couple of weeks, and Tamasitas being in the squad, he, he's a massive player for them, and yeah, that can, that can only augur well. Well, we've been joined now at the back of the stand by Kevin Utterson, and uh, who's obviously been, uh, you know, looking at his boys on the pitch and getting ready for this one. This is a, a big, big event, isn't it, Kevin? It is, sure, yeah. But it is. It's uh, listen. It's it's what you look forward to. It's what you play the games for. Border derbies. There's not. There's nothing like it. Listen, I used to love Gali. It's a great bit. It's a, a nice arena up here. So, I used to love coming up here and playing. And the boys, listen, knock them in together. They're all they're all together today, and they're, they're well. They're well and truly tuned for this game today. Well, we can't get away from the fact that it's been a long, 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 long time since Kelso won here. In Aye. fact, we we spoke to you last year about exactly the same thing. Another year has gone by, and still no Kelso win. Sixteen years now, and, and you were the last person to to uh, sort of taste uh, taste uh, victory here Aye. with that uh, last minute penalty, fifteen twelve. Unfortunately, that's come up again this year. I didn't know <laughs> to hear that again, but. Um, it needs to change. It's an old record that, and we need to get it changed. Um, can you? No, like see you hearing it, but you can what I'm saying. It's just, it's got to change sometime. And and what better than the day when we're can we're battling at the top of the table? Both played five, one five. Tough, some tough games in there. They get it wrong. So, no, it's it makes it does it makes for a good good old um, border but, uh, battle of the day out there at Netherdale. And this is a good Kelso team, isn't it? I mean, we haven't seen the likes of this for a while because we remember only you know a few years ago when it was a case of after the farmers were were, were away, you were yeah. kind of struggling at the bottom, and then you'd make this big comeback and and kind of survive in yeah. the division. Nothing like that this year. That's the reason why because can me and Bruce come in? Can you had to change these things because the team can you need your team firing at the start of the season? And that's. Okay, we've got a, a sort of different mentality here now um, and obviously we were up here last season similar time and we're in a far far better place as we were that, that time last season with the, with the game structure and the way we want to play the boys get it they're getting confident of course you get confidence with winning they're getting that winning mentality and they just want to win they're hungry and um, they're learning they're learning okay, and they're, some of them have to change a few things um, and no no they get it so it's um, no it's good going forward 
it is. It's good going forward. And we were with you a couple of uh, weeks ago, Inverleith, Stuart Melville, and you absolutely came out the blocks flying, uh, 28 nil or something. It was very, very good. And then the foot sort of came off the gas a bit, and, and we were saying to Stuart Johnson as well, uh, and his team also haven't really played for the full 80 minutes. No, that's that's one thing we do stress. It's uh, it's not happened yet this this season because um, I mean it is hard in games because teams always have their they have their spell, they have their push. Um, I think that game at Stu Mel, there was a lot of changes. They made a couple of good substitutions, to be fair. And we made a kind of gave the squad a bit game and that, and a couple of sin bins didn't help. But no, that was disappointing actually up at, up at Stu Mel. But they had the wind and everything. And we, just, we got that important try just into the half, and then we just thought, well, that's kind of the game one, which the boys maybe took the, took the foot off the, the pedal, which we didn't want. You've got to keep going, and that's what we want to kind of, as I say, you said there, we're striving for this 80 minute performance. So what better than up here today? Now it's a board league clash as well, uh, that will probably be f further from your mind than, than the league points, but having said all that, Kelso have actually got f all their three games away from home, so Peebles, you won 28-0, mm -hmm. this is an away match and you'll be taking on Melrose as well, so if you're going to get back into that yeah. final again, um, you're going to have to do it the hard way. I must admit, I've never even gave the, given the board the league a thought there, Stuart, but I know, listen, that's a bonus, that's an extra, sort of an extra added bonus, as you say, we win it at Peebles. Get a win up here today, and we're back in that mix because that was a that was a heart for last season. Still, that game at Hoyk, it still still leads away at me and Bruce because it was we had the game won. It kind of was there to win, and even the Hoyk, I like the Hoyk boys. I know and speak to they were no, they were they were um, surprised how well Kelso played. So so no, listen, we concentrate on the day um, league game, big big league game. We had to move on for last season. We had to bring our game on, competing with these teams at the top of the table, and and we certainly are. We're up there, so we're um, we're more than happy, but. Let's, uh, let's see what the outcome is today and hopefully it's, a, hopefully it's a good one for us. Absolutely, then we won't have to talk to you and remind you about that no, kick no, ever I again. No, I'll put it to bed today, hopefully. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. That's Kevin uh, Utterson there, the uh, joint head coach of uh, Kelso. It's Gala against Kelso coming up very, very soon. Just briefly, uh, um, to, to back to Robin again, and um, we've heard from both of them now. What was your own kind of overthoughts of, of what they've been saying? Yeah, I, th I think both coaches, they probably won't admit it, but I think they'll both be quietly confident and rightly so. I, I really like what's happening and what appears to be happening at Kelso at the moment. I think they've got a great leadership set up in place. You know, Kev, uh, Neil Hennigan, obviously, and Br Bruce McNeil. You know, the these are these are guys you'd follow over the top as far as I'm concerned. And I just like the look of this Kelso team and they are absolutely moving in the, the right direction. And they turn up in the big games, you know, they turned up in the Border League final you know, they, they put Melrose to the sword last season and let's not forget, they put Gala to the sword down at Pointer in what was a big game which arguably, you know, well if Gala had won that, they, they, they would have went up it's as simple as that, so Kelso turn up in the big games and as you alluded to earlier it, you know, is there possibly a question mark over Gala's temperament in these types of fixtures, you know they lost it, they lost here to Bigger, they lost here to Harriets and why? Let's see what happens today. It's, it's, it's got the makings of a, a fantastic match. So many questions to be answered, and we'll be answering them at uh, 3 o'clock today. But after the break, we're going to take a look at uh, the other Borders games going on this afternoon. Based in Gala Shields, but covering the whole region and beyond, Borders Mortgage Hub is your one-stop shop for all things mortgage-related in the Borders. Visit us at bordersmortgagehub.com or call us on 01896 807 008. That's 01896 807 008. Borders Mortgage Hub. Mortgages for the Borders in the Borders. Hi, Mickey Walker here, Curriculum Learning Manager for Sports and Outdoor Activities at Borders College. Have you ever considered turning your passion for sport into a rewarding career? If so, then why not get in touch at borderscollege.ac.uk forward slash sport. Borders College, regionally focused, globally engaged. To commemorate the 7th anniversary of the opening of the Borders Railway, an 8 DVD box set is now available featuring the complete series Borders Railway from start to finish, plus the full hour and a half documentary Five Years On, which examines the possibility of an extension to Carlisle, plus extra features including a cab journey along the entire Borders Railway, all for the special price of just £14.99, including post and packing. You can get your copy direct from hotdisk.co.uk slash shop. That's hotdisk.co.uk slash shop. The 8 DVD box set, The Complete Borders Railway, is available now.
When the weather's dreech and a storm's a brewing, you need a strong, windproof, quality umbrella delivered with good old fashioned customer service and at an affordable price. Up here in Umbrella Heaven, we say you tackle the ball, we'll tackle the weather. UmbrellaHeaven.com for when the heavens open. Hello, this is George Ingalls here, and I'm thrilled that my songs are now available on two albums Anthology and Lockdown Blues. Late in the evening. She's wondering what clothes to wear Both available on iTunes to download and stream I am the train, been gone since 69 George Ingalls Anthology and Lockdown Blues Check them out now on iTunes and other digital sites This is, this is Borders Rugby Special on Borders Rugby Radio OK, let's turn our attention to the other matches involving border sides being played. Now, I spoke with Dale Clancy earlier to go over today's games, and let's start in the Premiership with unbeaten Hoyt travelling up to Maleni Park in Edinburgh to take on Curry. Let's hear, first of all, from head coach, who is Matty Douglas. Yeah, look, there's no question about it. This is a, a massive game on Saturday for, for both teams. You know, there's a pressure on us to, to keep performing away from home and to keep this run of wins going, so the players know what's expected of them and, and they know what's going to take to get any sort of result here uh, we feel if we get our set piece right play in the right areas take the right options then we'll be able to put them under some pressure and hopefully that's enough for us to get some sort of result up here but we're under no illusion it's got to take a mammoth effort to to come away with any sort of points and um, we found that out last season just coming up short so on the whole the boys have worked hard after a you know a big win against Mar last weekend and it's one that we're really excited for. I think it's the first time going up here in a in a long time that we're excited and, and we're ready to go toe to toe with them. So team selection wise the pack stays the same as the win from Mar last weekend. Backline wise Kirk Ford is the only change. He comes in for Bailey Donaldson after Kirk missed out wellness last week. On the bench, Ross Graham comes in for Rudy McLeod and also Grant Huggin comes in for Kieran Riddle back for uh, um, injuries so on the whole there's a lot of competition for places and it, it's great to have and there'll be a lot of boys ready for a for a chance when they get it and um, it's it's what you need in a, a squad environment so yeah look on the whole um, it's it's one we're really really excited for on Saturday. Okay that is Matt Douglas and of course they saw off Mar 20 points to three last week uh, Curry are beatable as we've seen and this is perhaps the Greens best chance to get a win there for a number of years now I remember GHA put 40 points on them at Millenny Park so it is doable but of course Curry do the, have this habit of uh, you know fighting back Yeah I, I think they especially at home they're they're able to kind of pull a rabbit out of the hat and we've seen in the final last year when they looked down and out they almost got their way back into it just a, a little bit of Mars stubbornness kind of seen them through in the end but but you know Hoyk you, you look at all the, the the reports from from last week obviously Jay Linton getting his uh, 50th appearance after what was a career threatening injury you know he's a, he was a phenomenal player before that injury as well they've got a good bit of squad depth there and I think that they're going into that with pack power which I think is something that perhaps in the past has, has been a bit of their undoing because they've always been a you know a nice skillful borders team, small in stature, big in heart, good in skill set. But I feel like they've got that bulk up front. You know they've got that that real brawn and power up front to compete with a, a team like Curry because you know they're a city team. They've got you know got quite a big sturdy, turgid pack and Hoik have I've got that you know, to try and compete with now. But they also have the skills in the backline players, you know, in the backs that they've got that can really unlock a defence. And, you know, they're unbeaten for a reason because their defence has been so good as well. So they're going into there with confidence, going away from home. And I think they'll feel the pressure is off them as well because Curry have had that soft underbelly this season that I think that they're certainly, you know, Hoyt can go up there and get the win. Also in the Premiership, Selkirk against Marr. Now that's at uh, Fullerton Park. Selkirk seems to be the bogey side of Marr. And let's find out what uh, Scott White has to say. He's the head coach of Selkirk ahead of the match. Still looking for this consistent performance over 80 minutes. And, you know, we, we weren't able to cover. First half against GHA uh, last week, went into half-time 7-6 down. And, you know, we ended up being 14-6 down. And then last 15 minutes, we kind of... I turned up, I dare say, I've scored three late tries and won 28-14, which is brilliant from a momentum point of view. Um, I think we made obviously a few changes at half time which you know had a big effect in kind of our performance. Um, so that'll be reflective in probably the squad selection this week. We also 
Welcome back, James Bay, Andrew Cochran, uh, and Scott McClaymont back this week. I haven't missed last week, so you know selection will be tough again. Um, we've obviously worked on a couple of things this week to um, take up Demar, um, which is obviously going to be hard. Last year's champions, they've still not been beat at home uh, this season, so you know it's one that you know it gives us kind of you know, the challenge that we want and then it can just, then we'll see exactly where we are. You know, we've got a huge three weeks for the club coming up. We've got Mar away, Curry at home, Hoyk at home. So after these next three weeks, you know, we'll know exactly where we stand. But for us, we're very much focused one week at a time. Um, and this week, obviously, we we'll go up to Mar. And, you know, boys are confident. We've, you know, started the season really well. But, you know, they're last season's champions, so it's not going to be easy. So Selkirk's still up there, but uh, how they perform against Mar and Curry over the next couple of weeks, as Scott said, is really going to determine their chances for the the rest of the season. You would think, yeah, definitely. I think the you know those three games that he's he's rattled off are big games. They've they've started really really well. And again, at the start at the start of the season, when we were kind of looking at the the kind of runners and riders, we we well, I did. I certainly wrote Selkirk off because of the the campaign they had last year. They they've brought some players in, but. I think the 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 players that they've brought in have have just added and I think allowed the other players to do their job because there's a lot of good players in that squad. Obviously, you know Aaron McCombs come back from injury. He's a really good player, but a lot of the time he was having to wear different hats. Like he was having to play nine, ten. He was slotting at fullback, but you know he's probably slotting at fullback now because he's able to do his job and he's just going out in the field and you know asked to play as a fullback, not having to you know, act as first receiver, unless that's the game plan, obviously, because we see that quite a lot. But, you know, he's not asking to clear out rucks or just be the hero. I think that Scott White has really brought a good style of play to, to Philip Hoch, but I think this season they've been lucky with injury as well so far. Um, but he's allowing players, I think they, you were seeing the best bit of Selkirk now because the players are allowed to do their job. And again, Aaron McComb is a brilliant 10 and he's been kept out by Ross Nixon, who's playing 10. So this is... That shows you how well Ross is playing, and you know he's. I think he's thirty four years old. You know, thinking about kind of winding down his his time playing rugby. You know, he's got obviously his career and his family to think about, and you know he, he's nailing down the ten jersey by a, a a coach who has played at the highest level as a standoff. So you know it's it's good because he's got that decision. They've got that they've got that trouble this year as to who do I put in the ten jersey as opposed to. Oh, who'd have to put in the 10 jersey? So, you know, it's great to see Selkirk doing so well, but it's going to be a really, really big three weeks for them. And the other Premiership game involving a border side is at Braidholm, where Jed Forrest will try and be the third border team to beat GHA this season. And after putting 51 points on Heriots last Saturday, they've got to fancy their chances. Here's head coach Andrew Brown. So this week uh, we have quite a few changes um, in the squad, but uh, in no way does it affect the quality. Um, and we definitely go into this GHA game with confidence and momentum. Last week was a great performance right through the squad, um, and the attrition of the first half set the platform to cut loose in the final third of the game. Paulo Ferreira starts at loose head, and Harry Meadows comes back into the squad and starts at uh, tight head. Uh, ben McNeil started uh, last week at eight, but moves to 12 to cover for the injured uh, Ricardo Ferreira, uh, Paulo's brother. Uh, so this means in turn uh, Matthew Atkinson, who played in the second row last week, uh, moves back to number eight. And John Story, who started on the bench, will start uh, in the second row. Aidan Bambry continues to impress at nine, bringing tempo to the game. But he has a new halfback partner this week in Callum Young, who comes into the squad. Um, everybody's obviously really excited to get uh, to get Callum on the park and and to have him back involved with uh, with Jed. Uh, Rory Marshall keeps the thirteen shirt. Gregory Young and Robbie Shearer Goob start on the wings. Uh, fortunately, Mason Cullen's not available this week. He's been drafted into the uh, Southern Knights for emergency cover, so he's unavailable. On the bench, Darren Gillespie's available again this week, and he's going to start on the bench uh, alongside Andrew Sweeney, Lewis Elder and Blake Roth, with one other to be confirmed. We're looking forward to the game and uh, having a good go at GHA this weekend. So, Jed Forrest uh, sneaking up the old table with 12 points. Let's just have a quick look at the table. In fact, Embracki's at the top um, on points difference. They're on 26. Curry 26. Hoyt 24, the only unbeaten team. Glasgow Hawks uh, lost, of course, at home to Curry last week. They're on 21. Selkirk 20. Mar 15. Jed 12. GHA 7. Musselburgh 3. And Heriot's Blues 2. That's how it stands at the moment. And uh, Jed, always surprising people. Yeah, I think the next four weeks will be big for that table in terms that it might start to split slightly. But it was, uh, you know, a, a great high scoring win for Jed at the weekend. And I think that's the games that they're going to be in 
all season. I think that they're going to be high scoring. Um, you know, their their defence obviously is leaking points. But the beauty about Jed, the beauty that has always been about Jed, is that they're always able to score points. They're able to score tries from any point in the pitch. They just turn it on whenever they want. It's just that consistency and squad depth. But that seems like a really strong squad that they're able to put out this weekend. And GHA, obviously, they like to score some points. They put a lot on the curry, as you mentioned, at Mileni. They'll probably be 6-6 six, six in or something. Yeah, I know. 9-6 <laughs> nine, nine, to Jed. It's, it's probably going to be a high-scoring game. You know, both teams like to chuck the ball about. And, they're, you know, sometimes you get that with teams that are in the mid table you know they're, they're, they've they got nothing to lose nothing to gain and at this point in the season they want to start building that momentum to make their season something um, so I feel like Jed will you know start, they'll want another good performance build on that momentum they've had two good wins already so they'll try and make another one against uh, GHA Well we've already talked about the big national one and Border League derby between uh, Gala and Kelso our big commentary game so let's put the spotlight on Melrose now who uh, came back from several points down to squeeze a 26-25 win at what appears to be a Dundee side which is getting better and better every week this this week they're at home to struggling GHK and Melrose at home this season have been very very good putting 40 points on Watsonians over 60 on Aberdeen Grammar and uh, no reason to think that they won't rack up the huge score tomorrow but what does head coach Bert Grigg have to say let's find out on reflection from last week uh, sort of t- the first 20 minutes we were really dominant up at Dundee and then just sort of made some real simple errors that allowed them to get into the game and build a bit of momentum um, which made it a bit uh, closer than we would have liked or it should have been Um, so hopefully we can get back to a a sort of a stronger performance a more of a polished performance down uh, at the green yards again this week Uh, a few changes um, Will Ferry and Ben Weir both drop out due to injury Um, so it sees Ben McLean uh, slide back from Hooker into the back row position uh, with Logan Kirk starting uh, and Ross McConnell uh, stepping up from the storm last week to to join him in the back row. A few changes in the back line with Struan Hutchison returning to his normal number 10 position. Um, Gav Wood and Donald Crawford into the centres and uh, an exciting back three of Archie Pilcher, James Brown and Hamish Weir um, will look to take advantage of their sort of added pace on the the 3G um, pitch at the Green Yards this, this weekend. So yeah, GHK done done our work on them. They've got a, obviously got a, a very strong set piece scrum and line out. Um, Peter Wright's done a, a great job there, and uh, we're expecting a, a, a tough shift up front on Saturday. Uh, but looking forward to what should be an exciting game of rugby and a big day at the Green Yards with the the Wasps kicking off first, and then the Southern Knights before us, and then uh, we kick off slightly later at half three, um, just to. Uh, make sure that we can get onto the pitch uh, in time. But no, come maybe closer to six o'clock this week, hopefully have another five points at home and keep climbing up that, that league table. So just to repeat then, that's a half past three kickoff for Melrose against GHK. And of course, uh, earlier we heard uh, from uh, Bruce Rotherford, it's a one o'clock kickoff for Southern Knights against Stirling County. And as uh, Bert mentioned, the, the Wasps will be playing before that. It's a real festival of rugby there. And I think it's Oktoberfest as well. They're having a bit of a German knees up afterwards. But uh, what about Melrose? Not so great on the road at the moment, but certainly at home, you can't fault them. Yeah, I think, you know, there's, in these leagues, you need to be winning your home games if you want to mount any sort of challenge but it's a difficult league to be in and I think that you, you've got the the inconsistency of results makes it really hard to predict and I think that the you know that adds to the beauty of national one premiership is like that this year as well and if you actually look Nat 2 is all, also like that there's a cluster of teams you know all together in the same area and that's how it's going to still take a few weeks for it to develop but that's a great win on the road we kind of downplayed Dundee last week actually um, when we were, we were building up and we thought that it was it was probably going to be a bit of a cakewalk for Melrose but as you say they've, you know, they've been blown a bit hot and cold on the road but a, a great win at home and the, the difficulty is GHK have got a lot of experience with you know, a, a lot of players coming from the professional ranks back into their, their team Peter Wright is obviously at the helm but you know, it's always been sometimes the thing you know, Peter Wright does have a couple of good seasons and then teams t- tends to fade away slightly uh, but you know he's familiar with Melrose he'll be a, a welcomed addition back to the Green Yards I don't know how he got on in a 3G pitch mind in his playing days but you know he's, he's, he's played a bit of rugby there and he'll look forward to taking GHK down to what is one of the one of the kind of you know the historic teams of Scottish rugby if you will Melrose but now playing in that one 
National 2 now then, and following Peebles' victory at Berwick, they take on league leaders Glasgow Ackies, who have been uh, beaten, of course, by Falkirk, who in turn were beaten by Berwick. So they must fancy the chances at the Guides. And here's head coach Ian Chisholm. Plus to be happy about after a bonus point win away at Berwick. Um, I think we, we started pretty lethargically and we went down 12-0 pretty early on. Um, but I had a funny feeling that that might happen. And I think us as a group, we, we understood that it might happen and that... Uh, we, ju- we just need to keep chipping away and get some sort of possession that we can launch attacks from. Um, our line out was it was pretty poor. I think it was about about just over fifty percent. Um, conceded fourteen penalties again, which is down from what we have been before, but it's still it's still way too high. And if you, if you look at the territory that we had, um, we had twenty three entries into the barrack twenty two, but we only came away four times with scores. So we've we've got a fair bit of work to do, but. We're really starting to see glimpses of, of the rugby we're trying to play on Saturday. I think we, we kept hold of the ball for long periods of time. Um, we gave it a lot of width and, um, you know, there was, there was a bit of bite in our carries that we've not seen before. Uh, Glasgow Ackies, they're, they're, they're going to be a different challenge to Berwick. Um, they'll, they'll want to give the ball some air and use their dangerous backs. But I think um, that result against La Suede, it, 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 it tells me that they're pack up to the challenge as well. So... So look, we, we understand and understand that it's it's not going to be easy. Um, they're sitting top of the league at the moment, and and they're going to come down expecting a result. But look, we're at home. Um, the boys are. I think they're starting to believe that we can play the type of game that I'm after. Uh, and and we've we've got several players coming back into contention that that we that we've not had for a while. Um, Andrew Brown was due to be in the squad this week, but his wife's been induced, so I think he's he's got more important things to do this weekend. You know, thinking about the squad that we've had over the last two weeks, we've had um, Murdo Anderson and Rob Harrison in the centres, and you know these these are two back row players I've asked to um, to, to play in the centres, and they've been great. Um, we've we've simplified the roles, we've um, given them a right to roam, um, and and they've really bought into what 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 I'm wanting to do, but. Look, this week we've we've got we've got the likes of Neil Hogarth, Scott Stoddart, Buster Davidson, Kenny Clyde, Roy McConnell, Roddy Guinea, Adam McDonald, Jack Harrison. You know they're all available for us so this week. So um, the fact that we're getting positive results with we only five backs in our squad, it says a lot about the boys and, and how much they care. And our team is very much up in the air. But our, our front row last weekend, Willie Aitken, Andy Muir, and John Gray, they they did a great job. There's there's little bits and bobs that are. I want them to add to their game, but look, it's, it, it's a good it's a good foundation for us to build from. Finlay Collins, he'll he'll move into the second row with Ross Brown. Um, we're looking at Rowan McKeever or Ewan Jackson with Finlay Sinclair or, or Roddy Guinea, who's coming back into the squad in the back row. Um, DC and myself will keep our places at half backs. Uh, James Dowd, Frey McEwen, Donald Anderson, they're working pretty well as a unit in the back threes. Rob Harrison, he's not quite ready to move into the back row yet. I think we've got we've got a lot of options um, from second row back to number eight. But it's important he stays in the park. His involvements are huge. He's, he makes a lot of tackles, he carries a lot, and, and he's a real source of quick ball for us with his clear outs. Um, and he, but his brother Jack Harrison, He's a, he's a quality rugby player, he's, he's, he's very different to how rugby plays, he'll come back into the squad and if Ryan McConnell gets through, he'll come into the squad, if Neil Hogarth gets through, he'll come into the squad. Uh, we've got Kenny Clyde, who's ready to come in, but we've also got Kami Pai. He, he goes about his work quietly and you know, defensively, he's, he's more and more effective every game and when he does carry ball, he's like a juggernaut, so he's a real source of go forward for us. And, and of course, we've got Murdo Anderson, who he was he was man of the match. He was Berwick's man of the match last weekend. So I've got loads to think about. We can't afford to for boys to be kind of okay and and, and come into the squad and then leave the pitch with that same injury that we, we could have avoided. So the boys that are Carrie and Niggles, I'd rather we save them for for next week or the weekend after, and, uh, and we got everybody back on the pitch. Ian Chisholm. Here endeth the lesson. Uh, wonderful stuff. Well done to Ian, though. Uh, always a great insight uh, on Peebles and uh, the workings behind the scenes. And, um, you know, Ian, last week, you know, controlled the game at 10, still got loads to offer himself on the pitch. And, of course, a home win against Ackies could put them leapfrogging above Glasgow Ackies. And if Kirkcaldy don't get a win, lose their unbeaten record, Peebles could be top this time next week. I've been the, the biggest driver of the Ian Chisholm fan club bus, I think, for the, the last few weeks. And he's really bought into Peebles, and I think the guys have bought into him, which has brought a lot of positive results, you know, which kind of culminated there with the, the, the Berwick win in a game that they were, you know, they were behind in, they were struggling in, and then came back into it. But Ian Chisholm is, in his own right, a very good rugby player. Um, albeit apart from that, maybe he, he did put in a, 
a 50 yard pass it did go back oh yeah that yeah. was a strange one wasn't it yeah it was different but he's you know he was he was the first well third person there recovering he goes into so much depth in his analysis and I've, I've said how much the guys are enjoying working under him um, because they're doing it as a hobby you hear there all the players coming back in you know it's players that have been injured that have got you know jobs on building sites I mean you've got firefighters you've got people who work offshore you know they're all coming back because of the environment that he's created but they are big names coming like Ryan McConnell obviously ex-Scotland age grade Roddy Guinea ex-Scotland age grade that are coming back and, and playing in the club you've got Willie Aitken in there ex-Scotland age grade that is, is still playing at the age I think he's about 73 now so you know they've got they've got a, a great little melting pot of players now and even speaking the you know Finlay Collins and Simpson that are in there as well are really young players that a couple of years ago were playing Colt rugby that are starting to come through they're getting leadership roles in the squad and you know he's went in and he's not really judged anybody he's just took them at face value he's shaped his squad round that and there's competition for places and you know go, this is a big game this weekend at home and with that squad they're going into it confident well, let's hear from Berwick then. They're on the road this week against Carthay Queen's Park, who uh, haven't won this season, so certainly a good chance for Berwick to rebound from that disappointment at home to Peebles. And uh, here's the thoughts of Captain Jack Webster. Obviously, we're disappointed with the result last week, uh, but more so the performance, as we didn't play to anywhere near what we're capable of. Uh, so we want to fix that this weekend. Looking at the league table, uh, Carthay have had a tough start, but we're certainly not taking anything for granted on Saturday. Uh, we know there's no easy games in this league, so... Uh, so we'll have to show up well and play a lot better than we did against Peebles. Uh, as far as the team goes, uh, not many changes from last week. Uh, Jordan Patterson comes into the front row for his first start for the club. Uh, Nathan Melrose returns to the pack as well, while the back line is the same as it was last weekend. So, uh, so hopefully we can go out and do the business on the road this week. Jack Webster from Berwick, and we wish them all the best on the road to Carthay Queen's Park. And of course, they'll be uh, uh, playing on the pitch, which has the American football style goalposts, isn't it? The only one I think in, in Scotland. Yeah, I've never been there. Um, never played rugby there before, but I've seen the I've seen the pictures of the, the the posts. But Berwick have been, you know, good. I think that was a cracking game. They obviously watched back the coverage from the weekend there. The 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 game against Peebles was really good. I think, if I'm being honest, I think the the referee was a bit ropey in my opinion, but. The, the actual rugby action was really good and, and Berwick have made a good account of themselves I still stick by what I said last week I think that Berwick going up to the division they're in now have, in, for the next wee while are almost peaking with the, the pool of players that they have but hopefully they can develop and really cement themselves in that league because if you get yourself in that league you make it hard to get out of you give yourself a chance to push up and you know that's probably the same argument you're having with Peebles there but it's uh, they've made a good account of, them, account of themselves so far so hopefully they can get a win keep moving on keep pushing on and, and consolidating their position in the league because I'm sure they'll be gunning for the Peebles at the gates as well when they have that return fixture well, in East League One, Duns are away at Ross High, but we've got a camera at Volunteer Park in Hoyk for the East Two derby between Hoyk Lindine and Langham. Let's bring in, first of all, Lindine's Gary Alexander. The Lindine are really looking forward to the game against Langham on Saturday. Uh, two fronts, really. Uh, we get on great with Langham. We always have good games against them. But also just to get a, a game. Um, we've had a real stop-start season. Couple of last couple of weeks, we've had games off. A uh, fortnight ago we couldn't make it to Dunbar Last Saturday we were due to play Portobello in a friendly uh, But they couldn't raise a side So uh, that's another couple of weeks without game time But uh, as I say, Langham Always great matches, always hard contested And they're riding high at the minute uh, Three out of three uh, wins for them So they'll come up uh, through the tunnel with confidence I'm sure And hopefully a big support And we'll get a good crowd at the Volunteer for our own part, maybe last week being off isn't the worst thing in the world. We had a couple of players carrying injuries, so another week of rest for them has maybe helped. The hope is that the boys will be fresh and raring to go, and um, we'll have a great encounter with Langham. OK, it's going to be a good match indeed there. Of course, uh, Langham also didn't play last week. They were due to play Christophen and uh, the illness of a referee and not being able to replace him uh, caused the postponement of that one. That's now going to be played on November the 5th at 11 o'clock. Langham still unbeaten and obviously will start favourites. Here's their captain, Nathan Smith. This weekend, we're just up the road to Hoykland Dean. Probably our biggest rivals in the league, just with them being so close, it's become quite a feisty fixture over the years um, it's certainly the one that I look for at the start of the year when we get our fixture list we're pretty much at full strength just missing uh, Eddie Turner through illness we're pretty much firing on all cylinders ready to go 
was a shame for missing last week. Um, I believe the referee, referee, our first referee that we were assigned was ill and um, they were unable to get us another one. So that's another game that will have to be postponed and played later on. But we're we're just we're excited for this week to get up there. High Glendean going by the leagues, uh, the league table aren't aren't firing this year. But we know that games like this, anything it doesn't really come down to form. Anything can happen on the day and through past years we know what what a good side they can be so we're looking forward to getting up there and seeing what they're about and um, hopefully get the win okay that's uh, nathan smith the captain of langham another derby and uh, lindine will be hoping for a better performance against langham than uh, the one previously which of course we filmed yeah it was a it was a a great game at volunteer park and it's a you know, the Langham have, have, have obviously got a kind of an axe to grind from last year with missing out in promotion, but it's still early in the season, but they're, they're, they've been going great guns. And I think it's difficult, it's dangerous to get in that mindset when you're when you're talking about Lindy and saying that they've not really been going, you know, so well in the league so far. You can almost get into that little bit of complacency if you've got that in the back of your mind. So it's going to be a an interesting fixture. Langham have said they're their biggest rivals because of the obviously the geographical distance between them. Uh, but obviously, if you go into the mindset thinking that they've been pretty poor and you feel that you're superior to them, that's a difficult mindset to be in a border derby. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Lindine turned it on for, for one game this season so far and they were able to turn Langham over. But, you know, Langham have been putting in some good performances and they'll hope that can continue. Well, also in East League 3, Gala YM visit Liberton. Here's YM player coach Stuart Walker. Last Saturday against Edinburgh Northern, I was delighted with the performance of the boys. Um, you could see a lot of the things we've been doing at training coming together, and we had a number of boys back playing, which was, was excellent. Um, notably, Rudy Horsburgh was back playing, who who was man of the match. Uh, looking forward to this weekend, uh, we are um, against Liberton away in the league this time. Obviously, just played them a few weeks ago, and we know they've had a, a number of good results. And it'll be a tough game. Um, we're missing a few boys this week due to injury. Uh, Alex Selkirk, Shane Kellett and Rudy Horsburgh as well. Um, so, like I say, it's, it'll be a tough game. They're, they'll be looking to get us back for that last uh, bowl victory that we had uh, down at Netherdale. It's a similar pack to what we've had in previous weeks. Um, and I think we can really build on that momentum and um, looking for another big performance. In East 3, Earlston are away to top of the table, Edinburgh Northern, which will be a tough task for them. We got the thoughts of Earlston skipper Aaron Patterson. Our first proper away game this season. We are looking forward to it. We're going to see see how we get on. Uh, our Hoyt Quinns game last weekend, the result, scoreline certainly, 40-5. to five, Wasn't the most flattering, but we played some good rugby and some good attacking rugby. And it was a massive step up for you two weeks before that. So we keep moving forward. We go into this week and we hope to get a win out of it. Get our first win in the league this week. Edinburgh Northern last year, we beat them in the away game. I think we got beat in the home game. So it could go either way. However, I'm optimistic for us. I'm optimistic for the lads. I know that we've got a solid team going. So we're going to enjoy the, enjoy the bus up, enjoy the bus back down and we're going to play the rugby we know we can play and fingers crossed we get the result that we want. We could do to start building a bit of momentum. Moving forward with a couple of wins under our belt, we've got plenty of potential within the team and the Edinburgh Northern, for what I can remember, is quite a narrow pitch which means it'll probably be a forwards heavy game which from a back's point of view, is not ideal, but we're going to do our best to move the ball wide, get out there and play some play some good rugby, good running rugby. Uh, on top of that, we've got a solid scrum. Our lineouts have been decent this year, so we're going to take all that into this game and, as I say, hopefully get the result that we're all looking for and a platform to build from going forward towards Christmas and uh, the November break. Plenty of confidence there from uh, Aaron Patterson, who is the captain of Earlston, and they'll be taking on the uh, league leaders, Edinburgh Northern, on the road uh, tomorrow. But also in East 3, Gala YM visit Liberton. Here's YM player coach Stuart Walker. Last Saturday against Edinburgh Northern, I was delighted with the performance of the boys. Um, you could see a lot of the things we've been doing at training coming together. 
and we had a number of boys back playing, which was, was excellent. Um, notably, Rudy Horsburgh was back playing, who who was man of the match. Uh, looking forward to this weekend, uh, we are um, against Liberton away in the league this time. Obviously, just played them a few weeks ago, and we know they've had a, a number of good results. And it'll be a tough game. Um, we're missing a few boys this week due to injury. Uh, Alex Selkirk, Shane Kellett and Rudy Horsburgh as well. Um, so, like I say, it's, it'll be a tough game. They're, they'll be looking to get us back for that last uh, bowl victory that we had uh, down at Netherdale. It's a similar pack to what we've had in previous weeks. Um, and I think we can really build on that momentum and, um, you know, looking for another big performance. Well, let's have a look at uh, Kelso Ladies, who won their match last Sunday against Liz Morse, and that's three from three from them. Uh, they're away again on Sunday to face bottom club RDVC, so uh, should make it four in the bounce on paper, but Captain Donna Borthwick won't be taking things for granted. This week we face Royal Dick Vets away. We're really excited to go up there and play them. We haven't played them for a few years now, but um, obviously they have a new team most years because they're all students, so we don't really know who or what they're going to bring, but we're excited to go up there and uh, bring home the win again. Hopefully it'll be 4 for 4 this week. This is, this is Borders Rugby Special on Borders Rugby Radio. Yes, welcome back. We're here at Netherdale this afternoon for the National 1 Top of the Table Clash and also Border League double header between Gala and Kelso. It kicks off at 3 o'clock. I can bring you a final score from the Green Yard. You remember it was Southern Knights 19, Sterling Wolves 21 at the break. Well, it's ended... Southern Knights 19, Sterling Wolves 21. So uh, a loss at home and Alan Lorimer, our reporters down there, will uh, try and get a report from him very, very shortly. But time to go round the grounds and catch up with our reporters this afternoon. Starting in the Premiership with Hugh Brown, who's at Millenny Park for second place Curry against third placed but unbeaten Hoyk. And uh, we'll see if Hugh can get through his report without any of these uh, awful Curry puns. Hoyk's record so far this season is five wins and a draw, which is the best in the Premiership. Premiership, yet they're only third in the table. That's because they haven't grabbed crucial bonus points by scoring four tries. Opponents Curry Chieftains, whose 50th anniversary celebration took place in June, are two points above them and have a much better points difference. Today's winners will not only earn league points, but also pick up the Bill McLaren Shield, which Hoyk are defending, so there's a lot at stake. One of the reasons for the green success so far has been the return of the number eight, Jay Linton, who suffered a fractured vertebrae in his neck when playing against GHA last season. Amazingly, after ten weeks in a neck brace and six months' recuperation, he was given the all-clear by doctors to return to rugby and made his 50th appearance for the club last week at Mansfield Park in their 20 points to three win over Marr. Speaking to team manager Gary Muir, he tells me the team is unchanged from last week with no injury worries. Fraser Rennick and Daniel Sutton will return next week from the Super Sixes too. But the big question is, will Hoyt continue their unbeaten run or will Curry prove to be too hot for them? Couldn't resist it, I'm afraid. We'll find out when the game kicks off at three o'clock. Here at Millenni Park, it's dry but chilly for Curry against Hoyt. Oh, get off the airways. That is wrong on all levels. Anyway, also in the Premiership, Jed Forrester away to GHA. Selkirk travelled to Mar, so we'll be bringing you up to date updates on uh, those matches throughout the programme. Let's dip into National League 2. A big game at the Guides today. Guaranteed no puns as well from Sam Matthews. Third place, Peebles. And top of the table, Glasgow Ackies. Yes, that's right. I'm here as Peebles. Welcome top of Nat 2, Glasgow Ackies. Peebles make three changes to their dominant scrum which won the game for them against Berwick last week, ending their unbeaten run at Scrimiston. Jack Harrison is back for Peebles, though, in the 13 shirt. That will be a welcome change for Ian Chisholm getting a very creative player outlet in that back line. Club captain Neil Hogarth returns to the side for Peebles. That brings their forward, their front three at age up to a combined of over 100 years old, which is good because experience will be pivotal in this top-of-the-table clash. Kirkcaldy will be eager viewers of this game as they sit second in between these two teams here at the Gites. They are unbeaten. They will want to see what happens here as this game will really cement what the top three is going to look like going forward in this division. Kickoff is at 3pm here at the Gites. Thank you in very much indeed. Sam Matthews at uh, very windy Gites in East League two there's a local derby today at volunteer park between Hoyt Lindine and Langham and watching this one for us is Ewan Welsh yes good afternoon from a sunny volunteer park here in Hoyt where Langham make the short trip up the A7 to face Hoyt Lindine both teams have had a stop start season so far with games being called off for various reasons but it is the visitors who are the favourites on paper having won all their three games so far in this campaign whilst the Lindine are winless in their two matches so far this season 
The Lindians' hopes are boosted with the addition of a few quality players from the fringes of the Hike team as a result of the Hike Force game being called off, whilst Lionel would be confident that their squad is at full strength with no big injury worries. Hike Lindean haven't played a game in the league since the 24th of September in a home loss to Pennycook, and they will be desperate to get their first win of the season here today, whilst Lionel will be looking to continue their unbeaten run and take maximum points back to the tunnel to the Muckletoon. Kickoff here is at 3 pm for the Tasty Border Derby at Heuchland Dean versus Langham. You and Welsh reporting, and uh, tomorrow he'll bring you television highlights on that game. Uh, but we're not very far now away from kickoff here at Netherdale, just five minutes away. In fact, it's Gala against Kelso in National One. Full uninterrupted commentary of the game right here on Borders Rugby Radio. And uh, Robin Purdy and Neil Hinnigan are your commentators this afternoon. Well, Robin, a quick look at the other games in the Premiership, which we haven't mentioned yet. There's obviously Glasgow Hawks against Edinburgh Ackies, which is rather tasty as well. Yeah, it's a good-looking fixture. Both teams have had what they would probably think are good starts to the season, and I, I would imagine both of those teams will have aspirations to be top four. Um, so yeah, it's going to be you know if, if Aki's in particular can kind of come away from Glasgow with a win, then you know it's all looking good for them. Musselburgh against Harriets. Yeah, bottom of the table stuff. Um, I'd fancy Harriets to sneak that one and get their first win of the campaign. Musselburgh look like they're struggling. A wee bit, and yeah, I think the men from Golden Acre will be taking the points back to Golden Acre. Of course, lots of uh, focus on National One today here at Netherdale. It's Gala against Kelso, but uh, there's some other good fixtures happening today. There's Air against Aberdeen, Stumel against Highlands, Sterling versus Bigger, and Watsonians against Dundee. Now, on paper, you would think that should probably go to form, but as we've seen already, Dundee, for instance, you know, are beginning to come good, and uh, and so are a few of the other teams. Sterling, of course, against Bigger. Bigger should get their, their first away win of the season. You, you would have thought so, but as you allude correctly, allude to there, it's it, it's just starting to shape up this division. You know, teams, you know, five games in, and teams are starting to find their way. And you know, Melrose struggled to beat Dundee, and you know, bigger over a couple of reversals. But yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd imagine bigger will get stronger as the as the weeks and months go on. Uh, Melrose are kind of starting to quietly go about their business. Almost, you know, not that much has been said about them in comparison to Galland. Kelso and Ayr probably will be looking to get into the, the shake-up at the top of the table, but then that's the whole thing with this division. It, what makes it so exciting, in my opinion at least, is the fact it's only one one up. Just about every game's a cup final. I was going to mention Melrose, of course, because that's a 3.30 kick-off because of the Southern Knights game also being played today. And, of course, Melrose Wasps were playing at 11 o'clock, so a real triple header and a bit of an October fest going on uh, after the Melrose match as well. But they're playing GHK. Now, of course, we all know that they smashed what zonings by 40-odd points. They, they put Abu Dean to the sword by 60. Can they uh, go into the 50s today, do you think? I would have thought so. I certainly think it'll be a bonus point win anyway, Stuart. And yeah, I'd mentioned a couple of weeks ago that Melrose might be a team this season that flip flop between home wins and away losses, but they got, the, they got the monkey off the back, so to speak, last week with that win at Dundee. And as I say, they've just sort of quietly started to go about their business and they'll be, they'll be looking to push on from here. And I'd, like I say, I imagine they'll get the five points today. Well, we'll be uh, keeping you up to date with all the score flashes throughout the afternoon, so uh, stay here at Borders Rugby Radio. But it's time to hand over to Robin Purdy and Neil Hinnigan for exclusive live commentary of Gala versus Kelso right here on Borders Rugby Radio. Yeah, thanks, Stuart. What a game we have in prospect today. Both 5 from 5 in Tennis National 1 with only a bonus point to separate them. There's two five-game winning streaks on the line here this afternoon, so something has to give. So with a few minutes until kick-off here at Netherdale, let's take a look at some of the notable inclusions for both teams. For Gala, first of all, Harris Rutherford, he should have a spring in his step after a couple of weeks at the Southern Knights. He's at 10 outside the combat of Lachlan Johnson, who's at 9. Quite intriguing, 17-year-old hooker comeback roar, James Glendinning comes in at 8 this week. His battle against Bruce McNeil could go a long way to determining the outcome of this one. For Kelso, uh, Dwayne Patterson's 21 today. He forms a handy centre partnership with Captain Frankie Robson. And as mentioned, you know Bruce McNeil, he at 39 is still as effective and influential, influential as ever. He's at number eight for Kelso today. Man in the middle this afternoon is Neil Muir for what could be a fiery occasion. Uh, two border teams and joining me in the country box today is Kelso Director of Rugby, Neil Hinnigan now. Neil, I suppose it would be unfair of me, I think, to ask for a prediction given your position. So how do Kelso unpick this Gala outfit today? What's the game plan? Well, I think Gala, especially at home, have been, you know, very, very dominant all around the park, especially up front, uh, the tight head prop. 
Tan has seen us, you know, he puts his mark on the game early in the scrums, and if we can hold our scrum early doors, get into our shape, and just let Gala know that it is going to be an 80 minute battle, it might just get us in there early and let us get a foothold in the game, would be the first and foremost, just let's be in the game after 20 minutes and be fighting and uh, we could take it all the way, but if Gala get off to a good start like they have been doing, then we're only asking for a harder day, so hopefully that we we're in it at 20 minutes. Yeah, as Kelso are on the park, here come Gala led by captain Liam Scott, who enters the fray with a mascot, and yeah, it really does look like two evenly matched teams here today, Neil. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, looking at the team sheets, if you were going on, on paper, it's, it's hard to predict, it's hard to call, and it's, I think both teams deserve to be five from five, and as you said, something's got to give, and yeah, it's it's one that, even if you asked me for a prediction, I'd be struggling to give you one. Uh, we are neutral, hot and certainly, I, I couldn't pick between the two teams. Yeah, and we mentioned the fact that one up from this division, it, you know, we're only five games in, this is the sixth game of the season, but it, it is one important game with that in mind, and it's going to be Kelso to get us underway here, Kelso attacking what you'd class as the, the factory end here at Netherdale, and it's going to be Dwayne Patterson on the occasion of his 21st birthday who gets us underway. Kickoff drops into the hands of the veteran, Ewan Dodds. For Gala playing in the second row today, number four on his back, and there's the first carry for the big Lithuanian proper cult hero here at Netherdale. That's Marius Tamasitis, and he makes his customary five or six metres. And into the, the box it goes down the park from the scrum half Lachlan Johnson. So, first possession for Kelsey here, and it's Patterson. Patterson puts boot to ball up and under, is going to drop just about on the Gala 22, taken in by Harris Rutherford. Now he puts it into the air. Kelso player underneath it, first chance to run for Angus Roberts, now here comes Tate, the scrum half, to the burly figure of Keith Melbourne, speaking of burly figures, he pops it out to Bruce McNeil, his first carry afternoon, first of many, you would assume, and that's a big hit by Tamasitis on Allen Frame, two big props coming together there, now it's Murray Hasty's turn to put the ball in there, that's an interesting kick, and it's been put forward by Dwayne Patterson and Neil, a bit of aerial ping pong to get us going. Yeah, frantic, frantic. Both teams, uh, both teams look real wired for this one. To be fair, and I think Gala just sees a little bit of an edge there. That you know, Thomas Yates with a big carry, and then that was a huge hit from in the middle of the park there, and that's setting a good stall out for Gala. Yeah, it's a, a big start to the game for Marius Thomas Yates. We we spoke off air beforehand about his contribution to to Gala in the last couple of seasons for me he looks in slightly better Nick if anything this this season and yeah big player for Gala and it's the first scrum here Gala attacking the the Ferry Dean end just inside their own half it's going to be Lachlan Johnson to feed this always interesting to see the first scrum who gets the upper hand and that is even Stephen James Glendinning the young hooker come back row at the back of the scrum now it's out to the backs rather for the with his distribution, normally on point, but a loose pass there. Callum Pate, the fullback, has to mop up. Still Gala in possession. Johnson to feed to the hard-working Glenn McCrum, who's been impressive in recent weeks, the second rower. Not the biggest second rower in the world, but he puts himself about, that's for sure. And now it's Johnson again. That's been charged down by a Kelsey player. That's been brought in. No, it wasn't brought in. It looked like it was going to be brought in by Tamasitis, but it's been gobbled up by inside centre Tim McCavanagh. Tamasitis had Keith Melbourne on his case there. Now here come the Gala backs just outside their own 22. Over on that far side. Kelsa players in over the ball. Is it going to come back on the Kelsa side? It's been fumbled out by Gala there. And yes, it is in possession of Kelso. I think that's Melbourne over on that far touchline. So Kelso now just outside the Gala 22. Tate at the base of this ruck. Tate's got, Tate's got frame been fumbled by frame but it's came back with Tate again to Bruce McNeil he only knows one way and he makes two or three metres Bruce McNeil there's Gala players in over that but it's came back on the Kelso side but no illegally so just held on that fraction too long and yeah these teams feeling themselves out Neil yeah he was, he was quick to give that the referee there he, he must he wanted, couldn't have been on the ball long anyways but he probably was so 
fair penalty. I don't know who it was, but I'd be worried, or we have been worried about Liam Scott's influence on the ground. He's very good at number seven for Gal, and their young back row have got a lot of that about them, so I'm not surprised to see an early turnover, and it was a bit unlucky for Kelso, because it looked like they maybe had a bit of space out wide there, but fair play to Gal, a good defence. Yeah, Neil Muir, the, the, Neil Muir the, the referee, certainly didn't give long there. Bruce McNeil on the ground, and yeah, you mentioned Liam Scott. He he he's a throwback. He's he's old oh, school. Yeah. In fact, I can see Eric Paxton, uh, the great Kelso wing forward, sat not too far from us in that stand here. And Liam Scott's almost of that mould. Yeah, he is. He's he's a, a real warrior first of all. But you'd think maybe he'd be a bit. You know, he is rough around the edges, but he's got skills as well. And uh, we had him away at uh, Percy Park playing sevens in the summer there, and uh, he was there as a dog. But we were very surprised at his skill level, and, and he's got a little bit of pace as well. So he's an all-rounder, uh, and what he is very good at is on the ground. So we've got to be, we've got to have a lot of support quickly at the breakdown, or we will lose ball against Gala. Yeah, he, he he does get among the tries. Liam Scott, he, he scored last week at Bigger, in what was a a big win for Gala on the road at Hartree Mill, which maintained their five from five start to the season 189 points for and only 61 against four try bonus points now there is an injury here for Gallon. it's one of the talisman it's Ewan Dodds coming off Ewan Dodds is going to depart Stevie Cairns equally as experienced enters the fray and you probably have to say Neil that that's a blow to Gal at this early stage. Uh, Experience-wise, definitely. I mean, Ian Dodds is full of that. But not only that, I think he's he's in the line out. He operates well as well. So might Gal might struggle in the line out a little bit without him. Yeah, and speaking of struggling in the line out, Neil Gal have done exactly that. They've made a mess of that one. It was fumbled at the tail, and it's going to be a Kelso scrum at 15 meters in on the Gala 10 meter line. It remains nil nil here at Netherdale in this top of the table clash. Gala v Kelso, five or so minutes gone. Gala already a substitution down. The hugely experienced Ewan Dodds has left the fray. It's going to be a Kelso scrum. Speaking of experience, Andy Tate. A lot of experience in the halfbacks for Kelso. Andy Tate, Murray Hasty. They know their way around the rugby pitch, which could be key this afternoon in what we imagine will be a tight affair. Bruce McNeil picks up at the base. He feeds Hasty, Hasty. Had Patterson, that's a good tackle, however, on the Kelso player. But Kelso have kept possession. Tate has got Melbourne as the runner. Melbourne beats the first man, stands tall in the tackle, looks to free his arms, takes it into the 22, three or four metres inside the 22. That's a missed pass. Is it going to go to touch? And it is. It's, it's an error, Neil, but just Kelso starting to creep into this one. Yeah, just a bad choice there by Andy, which is unfortunate. Uh, Kelso were getting up ahead of steam there. And and maybe had Gala at ones and twos, and it was just a bit unfortunate they didn't execute it because it, it looked on there. Just maybe simple hands might have been the better option, but yeah, Gala maybe maybe slightly off the hook there. But uh, yeah, they're, they're hustling away there as well. This is it's it's very frantic at the moment, as you'd expect. <coughs> the two top teams in the division, Keith Melbourne, the Irish second row for Kelso. He's starting to exert his prominence in the proceedings here three tries to his name this season forms a formidable second row with the other Keith Keith McNeil two big old lumps in there Gala scrum just inside their 22 Rutherford Rutherford looks to run rather than kick or distribute now has he been caught there no he's going to get it back Rutherford so Gala just inside their 22 McCrum at the base McCrum's going to leave it for Johnson and it looks like Johnson will put it in the box and he's done exactly that it's not went overly far Looks like James Glendinning's underneath. That's been well taken by the Kelso player. That's Angus Roberts. He was the, the king of the air on that occasion. Now it's Tate. Tate there to Archie Cowens, the vice captain. Cowens goes to ground. Tate again. Tate to Hasty to Patterson. Comes back in field. Tate again. The base of the, the base of the rack. Now that's a little chip over there by Hasty. That's an interesting option, but it's been taken in by Gallabat. Again, that looks like Keith Melbourne in there with the, the donkey work, taking the Gala player down just on the Gala 22. So Gala hemmed in a wee bit at the moment. McCavera steals a metre. Kelso looking to counter ruck here, but Johnson's at the base. Now it's Tamasitis. Tamasitis again takes two or three 
to take him to ground, as is always the case. And again, Johnson to feed from the base of this rug back into the 22, so Rutherford's not going to be able to put this to the touchline, so he goes down the park with it. Into the arms of the Kelso player, dancing feet there. Just over halfway line, and a penalty coming to Kelso. So, yeah, it's been a good last three or four minutes, Neil. Yeah, Kelso just, just ever so slightly look a little bit more in control, but <clears throat> very, very early days. And Gala, you know, they're, they're very... They've been a little bit slightly more open than I thought they would be, especially from going 22, but they do get the ball away, and Harris Rutherford's got a good boot, and he's getting them up the park. But, yeah, they just gave away a penalty there, and it gives Kelso a chance to maybe put a bit of pressure on here if Dwayne Patterson can find a good touch. Yeah, so just inside the Gala half centre field, Patterson to kick to touch looking for distance and that's a decent effort that's a more than decent effort my word he's literally put that to the five meter line and what an attacking platform this gives this gives Kelso yeah that was a a very good kick it's one you need to come off or you look very silly but he executed that very well yeah that's a the mark of the mark of a confident young man to, to go for you know and it was you know it was full of intent as well that's what he intended and it has paid off handsomely so Kelso line out five metres from the gala line nil nil here at Netherdale ten minutes gone it's going to be Ewan Knox to throw in looking for one of the totems there in the line out and he goes to Melbourne at the middle now the Kelso drive comes on not going too far as it stands Bruce McNeil at the back now it's starting to move. Bruce McNeil's there. Keeps within the comfort of his forward pack. Oh, but the penalty's been coughed up by McNeil there. And that's a, that's a letter for Gala. What was that for, Robin? Did you see it? I think it Did looked he like he... Disconnected? I think back. he disconnected. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. I mean, yeah. I think they were trying like mad to get it going forward. And obviously, that's just unlucky. Um, Brother is calling Bruce out for that. I think I was just unlucky. Yeah, it did look like a, a slight, you know, a, a, a cigarette paper disconnect. Uh, were, yeah, here's Ewan Dodge coming Ewan back Dodge on. Ewan coming back on. He doesn't look to be in the best of health, but he won't want to miss this one, Ewan Dodge. But he, you know, he's, he's he's a savvy operator. If he, you know, if he didn't think he could come back on and oh, do a job it, it, then he's not going to disadvantage the I team. don't know if this is true I'm just guessing this he may be the line out caller and if they can get him just to be on the park and call line outs and organise it'll go a long way for them so I can understand why they want him back in the park if that is the case especially yeah and it's been oh, Taylor Wilson was up there it's come back on the gala side not as clean as they would possibly like mopped up by Lachlan Johnson so gala just inside their own 22 Tamasitis again Tamasitis with a coming together with Bruce McNeil, a couple of titans there. And Thomas as he does make ground every time he carries the ball. So just outside the 22, Gala now on the back of that. And again, Johnson's put the ball in there, into the box. Kelso player underneath. So here come Kelso again. That's a good carry by the Kelso player. He bumped off Glenn McCrum, the second row. It's Tate to feed from the base of this. Ruck, Murray Hasty puts it into the 22 with the boot and that's a net gain for Kelso because Callum Pate the fullback of Gala has shanked that into the, or, uh, over the top of the stand here at Netherdale it's going to be a Kelso line out 2 or 3 metres outside the 22 still nil nil. it remains here yeah and Ewan Dodds has had enough he tried to come back on but sadly for him his afternoon is over so Stevie Cairns you would imagine will re-enter the fray the line out goes to the tail clean line out for Kelso, good line out now here comes Frankie Robson the ex-gala man, captain of Kelso these days he's caught in the midfield by McAvena. Tate once again to feed, Tate's got, Tate's got a willing runner in the shape of Archie Cowens Tate again, feeds Patterson this time, Patterson at Herdman coming at pace but he's where Marshall now uh, the Red Sea is parted here for Keith McNeil and he's stolen five or six metres Br now Bruce McNeil Bruce McNeil's hit hard by Tamasitis but he maintains possession Bruce McNeil Tate to Hasty Hasty to oh and that's a big hit oh now was there arms in there yeah, I don't think so <laughs> Has there a, yeah the referee's arms come out it was yeah. 
Tim McCavanagh with the tackle on the Kelso player, but it looked like a shoulder barge. Kelso still knocking at the door, however, through Angus Roberts now. Tate at the base. Here comes Cowens again, the workhorse of an open side. Tate again to Hasty. Hasty with a chip kick. He knows it's a free play and it's an interesting free play. Good tactic by Hasty there. And he knew he had the penalty, but they're yeah. going to come back with a penalty and any more to come here, Neil, do you think? It looked like it. I, I mean, how can the referee maybe judge it on one side and you're not sure where the contact was, but it was borderline yellow card for me, but, I, you know, it might be just favourable that he doesn't go there because it is hard for the referee to to decide that, you know, on one one sighting. Robin, how do you make that call? It certainly was a dangerous enough tackle for a penalty. It certainly warranted a penalty. And speaking of making calls, Neil, I would have asked you what you would have done with a resulting penalty, but Dwayne Patterson... I would have took the points. <laughs> how I'm did I know you were going to say that? I see uh, Kelso have started without Charlie Marshall and Jamie Gordon has started the match, so whether there'd been an injury in the warm-up to him, Kelso would be down to 19 players, so I, um, I noticed that in the first couple of minutes, but... I, yeah. So J Jamie Gordon is yeah. on and yeah, the, the line out or the, the kick's been put to the corner and it's a Kelso line out and it's on the move at the kick. It looks to be Cowens at the back of this. It's still moving forward for Kelso. Now the backs join in. Robson's in. It looks to be in Robson's hands here. We're watching this one closely. Robson, is he going to flop over the line? Gala doing their level best to resist this. Well, it's right. Oh, it's been a penalty try awarded in the end and that is a brilliant net result from Kelso so it's going to be seven points first blood to Kelso in this top of the table clash and yeah he'll be fairly pleased with that Neil you know almost from a you know from I a see, rugby point I of view I take the points Robert <laughs> <laughs> no look I think it was executed well we didn't execute the first one very well we did that time the setup was good they started nudging it forward and Gallo were in lots of trouble and they obviously took a chance and it's backfired and yeah yeah, it's a good start for Kelso, very good start. Uh, you know, it's just next job's kick off catch, get it back up there and put more pressure on. But I just feel this Gala team's got to come out swinging soon because it, they've not really fired anything yet, but it's got to come, that, you know, I would suspect. Yeah, it's, and it's possibly a bit more breezy down there than it is up here, Neil. Is that in Kelso's favour at the moment, would you say? Possibly slightly, yeah. Yeah, so kick off has been taken, Lachlan Johnson. Back in Kelso possession, halfway between their 22, but again another gaps opened up there in the you know in the Gala defence, and it was Keith, rather it was Bruce McNeil to exploit it, but he's run away from his support. It's came back on the Gala side, and again Tamasitis, who's been really prominent so far, takes another three or four metres, another two or three men, and bring him down. Is that a penalty there? There's men over the ball from a Kelso perspective. But it's came back on the Gala side eventually. Stevie Cairns now the substitute on for Ewan Dodds early in the piece, so here come the Gala backs, Rutherford to McAvanagh, Tim McAvanagh stays on his feet long enough for his support to arrive, Johnson again at the base of this, Gala starting to knock on the door here, oh that's a good carry from the young number 8 still going, James Glendinning the 17 year old, good impetus there, now speaking of youngsters here comes Harris Rutherford, Rutherford to Pate, Pate's got another youngster, that's Taylor Wilson, Scotland under 20 training camp announced this week with him in it. Here comes Gala again in the form of Stevie Cairns, but the referee, no, it's, oh, it's, oh that's a good hit on Tamasitis. Tamasitis is driven back on that occasion. You don't see that all that often. And there's off, there's afters. Oh, there's afters here. Now, was there a punch there by Bruce McNeil? There's certainly afters. We'll keep an eye on that one. No assistant referees at this level, of course, possibly for a good job. As far as Bruce McNeil's concerned. Anyway, here's Ben Gill. Gala now back inside their own 22. Gill to Pate, and Pate sent it down the touchline. And there's some verbals going on between McNeil and Tamasitis, and that's one to keep an eye on, Bruce, as they come together in the middle of the park. They might just be better served to walk away from each other. I would suggest that would be the best thing, but I didn't see what happened, but it's a bit after some. You know, Thomas Hayes has been dominant in every collision. The man has been superb so far, and I think that was the first time he's been really hit back. I don't know if he didn't take it well or whatever, and there's been a bit of afters. But you know, Bruce McNeil is a wind-up match. He maybe said something, who knows? But the referee, as you say, with there's no ARs and that, it can be difficult to see what's going on. I've never seen anything, but there's definitely some sort of skirmish between the two of them. 
Aye, that's going to be an interesting one to keep an eye on. They certainly came together, and yeah, I'd, I can't remember the last time I've seen Tamasius driven back in a tackle, and yeah, I'm, I'm sure Bruce McNeil quite justifiably had something to say <laughs> in his ear on the back of that. Uh, it's maybe what happened after that the referee never noticed, but anyway, here come Kelso again. Good strong run by Frankie Robson, the inside centre, the Kelso captain. Now Keith McNeil with the, the step and go, he's wrapped up, there's a Gala player in over that. It's going to come back on the Kelso side. So Hasty, Hasty puts it towards the corner. Good kick by Hasty. Is it going to make it to the corner? Ben Gill's back there. And ben Gill's kept it in field. He's kicked it down into the arms of Dwayne Patterson. Now Patterson cuts inside, maintains possession. Now McNeil's on the charge here. Takes the short pass from Tate onto the Gala 22. Herdman up playing first receiver but that's gone forward and a wee bit of a let off for Gala there They're, certainly Kelso have got the upper hand in the first 20 minutes or so yeah just we've asked you know Kelso's probably let them off the, just one or two too many times so far um, in the positions and just maybe not just quite executing but they're certainly getting a bit of joy for kicking it into this bottom corner. Ben Gill, he actually decent clearance there, but he's, he's sliced a couple of touch, so you can see why Murray Hastie's maybe looking to get the ball into that space and Angus Roberts on the chase and whatnot. So that's working well for Kelso at the moment. Yeah, it certainly looks to be something that's on Murray Hastie's mind. Smart player, Murray Hastie. If he's noticed anything that might be perceived to be a weakness there, then of course he's going to try and exploit it, the experienced campaigner, but it's a gala scrum. Five metres outside their own 22 Kelso. I've got a wee bit of shunt on there, but it's came back and that's a dummy and not a kick there by the fullback Callum Pate. He gets it to Ben Gill when it looked for all the world like he was going to send it down the park. Anyway, here comes the carry from the second row, Glenn McCrum. Looked like he possibly was taken high, but the referee's fine with it. Oh, and that's a flat pass by Harris Rutherford that's been fumbled so here come Kelso now and Kelso have got men over here here comes Robson cuts back inside back into the traffic where he'll set it up Frankie Robson oh was that a fumble there yeah a slight fumble there by Andy Tate and it, yeah, that's exactly what it is Neil it's a, it's a let off for Gala as Kelso continue to build a, a head of steam here OK, let's just cut in there with some latest scores for you. Curry 10, Hoik 7 in the Premiership. It's uh, GHA 13, Jed Forrest 7. Paulo Ferreira scoring a try for Jed Forrest. 21-0 up are Heriot's Blues against Musselburgh. And it's Mar 7, Selkirk 5. A Ryan Cottrell try has been cancelled out. So in the Premiership, 7-5 to Mar. In uh, National 1, it's Air 12, Aberdeen Grammar 5. And uh, down here, of course, at the moment, Gallanil, Kelso 7. And as you rejoin us, it's going to be a gala scrum just inside their own 22, 15 metres in from the far side here at Netherdale as we view it. And they're going to run this one out, but it's been fumbled by Tim McAvena. He came around at 100 miles an hour, so advantage being played. And Bruce McNeil takes off. He's tapped, tackled by McAvena, but it's Kelso possession just outside the gala 22. Not what gala wanted at all, but it's been fumbled by Kelso now. Had enough advantage being played. No, he's going to bring them back for first knock on and a wee bit error strewn in the last two or three minutes. Yeah, yeah just a, a couple of errors for both teams. It's still a bit frantic. Uh, Kelso certainly put more phases together as Gala and they've just plotted their copybook with an odd mistake. It, you know, for, for a Kelso point of view as well, it's probably been a couple of unforced ones rather than pressure, you know, and uh, you can you can understand when you make a mistake when they're putting pressure and putting you. So Kelso just need to tidy that up a little bit for their point of view. Gala just need to hang in at the moment, keep working to get the ball back. and get Because when Gala have the ball, they're winning collisions going forward. They made a lot of ground up there earlier. So Gala are well in this game because if they get ball, they will give Kelso a lot of trouble. Yeah, powerful carriers in the Gala ranks, Tamasitis and McAvena, to name but two, but it's a Kelso scrum and that looks to be inching forward. Is that going to result in a penalty? It's moving forward at more pace now, but Tate's at the base and Tate sends it to Hasty. Hasty to Patterson. Now here comes the big winger, that being Cami Brown, but he's reasonably well marshaled by the Gala defence after he'd made a metre or two. Now here's another carry, the third or fourth by Archie Cowens. Kelso, five metres now from the Gala line, looking for their second try. Seven points to nil to the good. Tate again at the base of this ruck. 
Tate has got the McNeil brothers to his left. Bruce is the one that takes it in. Now Tate goes, oh no, Tate's been caught in the base, but he's, he's managed to maintain possession and set it up. Hasty in to play scrum half as Tate's caught in that ruck. But it's the youngster, Cammy Thompson, who picks and drives. Young back row forward with the headgear on. Kelso now picking and driving to maybe within two to three metres of the gala line. Tate, Tate's got Melbourne to his left. Now Melbourne, can Melbourne reach out? No, he's going to be held up short. But Tate again is towards the base of this. Tate's got Cowens to his left. He's, he's also got the hooker, Ewan Knox, but it comes to Cowens. Cowens looking to crash over. Cowens, is he over? No, he's been held up just short. Now there's a penalty. Yeah, Ben Gill's in, in there preventing the ball coming back. Oh, and it's another try. Try to Kelso. Looks possibly like it's Bruce McNeil who touched it down. Possibly Bruce McNeil. Possibly Cammy Thompson. Possibly Frankie Robson even. Hard to tell from where we are, Neil. But you won't care a jot who scored it, I don't imagine. No, not particularly. Bruce McNeil scored from about two inches most times. He was bragging this morning. He'd scored three gate uh, tries so far. And I said a maximum five inches. So he's got another one. That's another one. But to be fair, it has been coming. You know, Kelso, as I've already said, some unforced errors probably saved Gala from Kelso maybe getting another one. So probably deserve it, Kelso, in the balance of play. But I have noticed how dominant Gala are in the collisions. Apart from that big tackle from, on Thomas Eaters from Bruce McNeil, they were pretty dominant going forward, Gala. So Kelso need to be wary when Gala do get the ball. They're coming at them hard. But uh, Kelso, yeah, they just, just about deserve the lead, I would say. Yeah, I would agree, Neil. I would say they're good value for it. 12 0 kick to come. Frankie Robson, five metres in from the stand here at Netherdale. Glorious conditions out there now, albeit a, a bit of a breeze that he needs to contend with. So first attempt of the day. And he's tugged that one to the left, so it will remain 12 points to nil. And yeah, very good start by Kelso. I was going to ask you, Neil, when you seen the when you seen the Gala team announced, did it and, and it didn't have Angus done at number eight? Did that give you a wee bit of a boost? Yeah, yeah. A any names like you know any type of players missing is going to be big for Gala. And we never take that away from Gala. Angus Dunn's a quality number eight, and if he's not playing, that it totally is a boost for Kelso. Surprised to see the mission of Craig Dodds as well. I thought Craig would be in the squad. Uh, you know, he always experienced, and plus he knows Kelso Craig. So yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, it, it is a help. Everything's a help. Indeed, and we're back underway here. The kickoff was taken. It was caught by the Kelso player who put his foot through it, and now it's going to be a gala line out. A gala have not had much territory in the last 10, 12 minutes or so, but it's a line out to them, a metre or so out with the Kelso 22. So they'll be looking to do something from here. Gala tw trailing 12 points to nil and not really been in this game too much they've had, they've had two or three big carries as you said earlier Neil Tamasitas in particular but the line out comes in and it's been taken just but here comes Liam Scott on the charge Scott mopped that line out oh, was that high the referee's arm comes out so yeah it looks like it was it's going to be a penalty to Gala just outside the 22 centre field so will Gala choose to go to the touchline as Selkirk did or will they take the points yeah they've signalled already that Harris Rutherford's going to have his first kick of the afternoon and yeah a wee bit cheap that one maybe Neil yeah it probably all started with a pure clearance to Cammy Brown out there um, I don't mind kicking it straight away because I think relieving pressures from the kick is a good thing it's like an extra set piece these days so getting off the park's never a bad thing Gala got a little bit fortunate in the line out but you could see the way he was running across the park there was always a chance a Kelso player was going to leave a frail on arm and they did and it was a penalty and You'd expect Harris Rutherford just to nudge this over and get Gala out of the game, and that's what we need. Yeah, it was certainly nothing more than that. Yeah, it was the way the kind of the angle that Liam Scott was running at. It was it was just a flailing arm, as you as you say. But it's Harris Rutherford almost bang in front, a meter outside the 22. You would imagine a kicker of his quality to come away with here, yeah. come away from here with three points as he begins his run up. Yeah, no mistake made. By Rutherford, so Gala on the board, Gala 3, Kelso 12, 26 or 27 mi minutes maybe gone here, and from their first meaningful foray into Kelso territory, Gala have left with three points, so it will be the birdie boy, Dwayne Patterson, to get us back underway, 
Decent kick by Patterson. That's going to be taken in by Stevie Cairns. Cairns puts the shoulder down. Half tackle there. Makes a metre or so. It's the scrum half at the base of this ruck. Actually, now it's been no. Forms a, and Taylor Wilson comes in to form a bit more room from which Lachlan Johnson has sent this into the air and has that drop now did it go forward by the Kelso player it looked like it possibly did from here but the referee's going to let that slide so Kelso have it just outside their own 22 Bruce McNeil takes it and he's wrapped up behind the gain line Tate now Tate's got Melbourne but he sends it back to Hasty who dropped into the pocket it's gone in the air and it's Andrew Mitchell who's underneath it and Andrew Mitchell's done well to release that to Lachlan Johnson now here comes Harris Rutherford Harris Rutherford tried to grab her it but it ricocheted off a gala player's legs into I think it was one of the McNeil brothers who subsequently spilled it forward so it's going to be a gala scrum five metres in from the stand side just inside the Kelso 10 metre line and gala just creeping back into this game Neil yeah I did see they would come out swinging at some point and they have now and they look a lot more settled in this game and you know Aris Rutherford's got them on the scoreboard now now they're looking a bit more deadlier in attack and that, if that ball gets through there you know the Kelsey a little bit of bother and you know they'd have to mop up and whatnot. so Scrum Gala here and, and they're certainly on the charge now So yeah the two front rows to come together and it's Lachlan Johnson to feed oh it's squirted out the back so he gives it to Ben Gill Ben Gill to McAvena back to Gill that's a good tackle in there by Dwayne Patterson, he stopped the momentum. But Galav got to ground. So here comes Glenn Bruff, the Arcadian. Summer shining for Gala. Again, out to Rutherford. Rutherford back into Callum Pate. It's been taken in there, but no, the referee's bringing them back for a penalty. And that's, again, just a couple of quick fire indiscretions there by Kelso. It's centre field, it's I, kickable, and yeah, they've, they're going to go for the post I, again, Gal. No idea what the penalty was for there. Um, obviously, Neil Muir's seen something. Um, he was right there, so he must have seen something, but I think he was signalling that hadn't gotten round or something along those lines. But yeah, you'd expect our sort of it's front of the posts again, a little bit further out. You know, he kicked off, you'd expect this to go 12 6. And for all Kelso's pressure, you know, that's Gal within a score and it's game on. Yeah. So he's. Yeah, maybe 15, 15 metres out with the 22. Almost bang in front. Harris Rutherford, he's one for one so far this afternoon. A couple of weeks spent with the Southern Knights, further developing his game. So Rutherford runs up, struck it cleanly enough, and the flags go up. So as you say, Neil, Gala right back in this now. It's a one-score ball game. It's Gala 6. Kelso 12, 30 minutes gone. Tetchy stuff, yeah, as you'd imagine. It is tetchy, and it's just there's little small details, you know, every sort of two, three phases, and they're all adding up one way or another. And Kelso were getting on top of the little small things early doors, but it's just becoming a lot more even now, and uh, yeah, it's very intriguing now, anyways. Patterson again, that's a really good kicker from Patterson. He's going to give his forwards a chance to contest, and Keith Melbourne got a big mitt to it, but it's been picked up by. Tamasitis, this one man yardage machine. Now it's back to the converted Hooker, but Liam Scott's made the break and Scott's got Mitchell to his outside. So here goes Mitchell. Mitchell's got a man to his left, but he's brilliantly tap tackled. Now, has that been fumped? No, it's been taken in by the Gala player over on that far side. So Stevie Cairns at the base this, but he's going to leave it for Johnson. Back to Irvin. Irvin moved it on to McCrum. Here, here it comes again. Back to Tamasitis. Tamasitis in the midfield, and there's a collision. Tamasitis on Bruce McNeil. And Tamasitis continues to move forward. That, oh, there's, a, there's an off the ball. There's a fight going off the ball here. Referee's not seen it. As Rutherford takes a step. Now that's came back to the youngster, James Glendinning. Gal have got men over on that far side if they can see that, but it's been fumbled. Actually, oh, Bruce McNeil with the fend off into the face of the Gala player. And Kelso are going to come up with possession five metres from the Gala line. Better play from Gala. And it's been hooked by Andy Tay into touch. So Gala very much in the ascendancy here. And 
Yeah, I don't know what was happening off the ball there, Neil, no, but over on that know. far side, there was certainly something. Don't know, Neil Muir was, you know, obviously getting the ARs down here, so... Very difficult for a ref. Yeah. And, you know, a game of this magnitude, these are two good teams, top of the table stuff. Yeah. And no... Yeah, there, 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 there's, there's not enough, you know, we all know there's not enough officials out there, sadly. Yeah. But you almost think of a game, you know, a, a derby, a game of this nature, a lot on the line if they could, you know, take a view almost on such a thing. OK, let's uh, cut in whilst there's an injury with some updates for you. And it's Curry 10, Hoyt 19, GHA 20, Jed Forrest 10, Harriet's 28, Musselburgh 7. That's Harriet's Blues, of course. Mar taking the lead against Selkirk 7-5. Into National 1, Air 12, Aberdeen Grammar 5. It's uh, Watsonians 8, Dundee 0. International 2, lots going on there. Cartha Queen's Park 3, Berwick 12. A couple of tries from them, including what? One uh, from James Thompson. And how about this for a scoreline at the moment? Dumfries down in ninth place at the moment. 34 against Preston Lodge, who are in fourth, nil. So that's a big one. Dumfries 34, Preston Lodge nil. Hamilton Bulls 3, Falkirk 5. Kirkcaldy nil, Newton Stewart 8. Kirkcaldy unbeaten, of course. And Peebles 19, Glasgow Aki 7. Back here, the line out to Gallup. It's thrown in by the number eight. Also a hooker, James Glendinning, and here comes McAvena with a charge now. McAvena's bumped the first man off. He's got the support of his captain, Liam Scott. Oh, and that's been fumbled there by Gala. I think it was Lachlan Johnson at the base, and that's a let-off, Neil. Yeah, Neil joining us again in a second. Let-off, Neil. Yeah, I think just... Uh I don't know if there was a sneaky hand or not there. I don't know if what was going on, but it was a bad fumble. Similar to the one Tate had down there. And it's a let off for Kelso because Gala are knocking on the door now. And th the last five, ten minutes, Gala, oh, a bit oh, of back chat. A bit of chat there, and it looks like it was Lachlan Johnson. Silly from Gala because yeah. the, the Gala have been the best team the last ten minutes. They're all over Kelso, and the last thing they need to do is let Kelso off the hook. And yeah, I'd be, I'd be a bit. Upset if I was the other way around, so Gala, you know, I've got to speak for both teams. Gala just silly there. Yeah, I think judge, judge, judging by Taylor Wilson's reaction, oh, yeah, I just see Lachlan Johnson apologising to his teammates, and he, he, it's not the first time we've seen him do that. He's a he's a fiery character, you know, he's a scrum half, Lachlan Johnson, but he sold the jerseys a wee bit there on that occasion, and he's let Kelso off the hook because Gala had the pressure there and it's now going to be a Kelso line out from the resulting penalty that was kicked to touch the number six Cami Thompson's went up there at the front of the line out and secured possession for Kelso so it's held in here as they attempt to drive it forward Tate's now at the back Tate uh, hasty hasty out the back door now it's come to Patterson Patterson was met by Mitchell in the midfield but he's managed to evade him Patterson and he's done well to set that up Again, another chip kick, the third or fourth of the afternoon from Murray Hasty. It's been gathered in by a Gala pressure, but he's a Gala player, but he's under all kinds of pr pressure from the onrushing Kelso defence. That's came back on the Gala side, albeit they're back in their own half now. Taylor Wilson, this impressive young flankers, hit hard and caught behind the gain line. Gala now on their own 10 metre line. It remains Gala 6, Kelso 12 here. Now Harris Rutherford's going to try and maintain some territory by kicking it downfield, it's taken in though by Dwayne Patterson and he's returned it with interest and Lachlan Johnson's having to make his way back Johnson, he's in the 22 and he sent it towards the touchline, that's a decent he kick did. from Johnson, a man with a, a bit of making up to do as a youngster enters the fray, that's Kelso prop Ashton Asante Kelso Quinn's player last year, he's moved up to adult rugby he was on the bench last week. I think he made his debut. And I think you know, he was a was he a winger before converting to a prop? Yeah, it's a bit of a, a funny story. Yeah, I suppose it's, you don't hear it that often. But he's good around the field. He's very uh, very abrasive in the contact, and he's you know he's he's keen and whatever. But he, he, he technical ability is just not there yet. But we're trying to get that sorted. So see how he goes. Yeah, be interesting to see how he goes. Bit of a baptism baptism of fire. And Kelso have made a mess of the line out right over the tail. And I think that was Glenn Dinning with a kick forward once it came back to him. Oh, and Glenn Dinning was flying into the challenge there. And Angus Roberts did well to ride that. Has it made touch? No, it's going to be kept in by Kelso. Tate, two, and there's more afters going on here. Glenn McCrum, it's all happening on the touchline. 
McCrum and the Kelso hooker Ewan Knox coming together. But that's been sent downfield by the Kelso fullback Herdman, deep into the Gala 22, now into the Gala 5 metre line, and Harris Rutherford's back there. Rutherford's sent it down the park, that's a decent touch finder. And there's just a bit of niggle creeping at this one, Neil, as, as you'd expect. Yeah, I think it's obvious we really needed ARs at this one today because players are taking it upon themselves and liberties to do silly things. and uh, It's both sides. Both teams are at Oh, yeah, and, absolutely. And uh, if Neil Muir manages to catch one of them at the wrong time, you're looking at a red card. So you've got to be, sal you know, you've got to be savvy. And I'm talking for both teams. I've been neutral here. It's just it's a big game. And yeah, the last thing you want to do is be down to 14 men with half the game to go. OK, let's uh, give you more updates. There's uh, another injury on the pitch there. And uh, good news for Hoyk. They've got the bonus point try. They're now ahead at Curry, 26 points to 10. Remember, they're the only unbeaten team in the Premiership. It's a GHA 20, Jed Forrest 17 now. Callum Young has gone over for a converted try for Jed. Still waiting on the news from Glasgow Hawks, Embraki. It's very quiet out there today at, uh, at uh, Glasgow. We've got uh, a comeback on the cards for Musselburgh at Heriot's Blues. Heriot's Blues went 28-0 up. It's now 28-14. Mars 7, Selkirk 10. Uh, Selkirk retaking the lead there. In National 1, it's Air 19, Aberdeen 5. Galler 3, Kelso 12 here, of course. A couple of 3.30 kickoffs. Melrose 5, GHK 0 is a latest score. Uh, Stumel and Highland 0-0. And Watsonians 11, Dundee 0. And there's a Kelso line out. Just inside the Gala half, Kelso lineouts went well in this first half, better than the Gala lineout anyway. Good yardage made by the Kelso player there as well. So up, in, up into the 10 metre line, and another carry from Archie Cowens, offering him up, himself up for work. Bruce McNeil now with the carry, he's taken down by Harris Rutherford. Players at different ends of their career, if you like, and it's the brother. Keith McNeil now, the second row, has that been held in there? It's been stolen by Gala, now it's a penalty. Oh, and Glendinning's taking it quickly, and Glendinning is going up that stand side, and he's grubbered it through the youngster. Good play by Glendinning, and the Kelso player coming across, and he's going to have to take it in a touch, and smart work by the youngster, Neil. Very smart play by Glendinning. I think, I don't know if it being the loss to take it as quick, you know, the, the penalty players were there. I suppose it was good, it was really good play by him. Uh, smart play, and he's got, he's got Gala right up the pitch here, right on half time, but good time for Gala to score, and Kelso just a little bit sloppy there, too uh, pedestrian going wide, it was easy ball, Gala on the floor as we said, so fair play to Gala, great play by the youngster as you say. Yeah, yeah. I've been impressed by him this season, I was impressed by him last year in the under 18s and he's picked up where he left off, but he's thrown into that line out and it's gone into Kelso, the grateful Kelso hands, so it's now Kelso just inside their own 22 looking to exit, Andy Tate looks like it's going to go in there here, and that's exactly what happens, Andy Tate with the box kick, Ben Gill looks to come under, Ben Gill's under pressure but Ben Gill's done well there, Hasty was coming, still going, Ben Gill, he's a powerful carrier Gill but he's been wrapped up now by Hasty and Asante now it's Rutherford, Rutherford oh, that forward. looks forward, the forward. referee's going to let that one go, oh, that one forward God. from here it's forward a long, long way yeah, so it's Gala still in possession not over the gain line as yet, but here they come again in the shape of Glenn McCrum, McCrum takes it to ground Looking to rebuild Gala, take it back towards the Kelso 22. Now it's out the back door. Here come the Gala backs. It's Pate. Pate's got Glendon and Glendon has got Gill. That's a good tackle by Kelso. It's came back in. Oh no, the touch judge's flag goes up. And there's more. Yeah, there's more afters going on there. But the referee, is it going to be half time or is the referee going to have a word? Yeah, he's. I think he's. No, it's going to come back. They are good defence by Kelso, good scramble. Yeah, it was, it was good defence, Kelso. They, Melbourne, the name on the white channel, and Angus Roberts, a great tackle, and Ben Gill, he's a powerful runner, and a lot of wingers might have succumbed to Ben Gill's power there, and he'd have been in for a try, but, uh, you know, Angus Roberts just made sure he got his man in, got him at a touch at the same time, and, um, yeah, I think, is that Carmi Brown, I think, is maybe down for Kelso? Yeah, I think it is Brown. It's a shame if he has to go off, because he's having quite a good game, he's, ta he's uh, carrying well, and, He's offering his cell up of the wing. He's, oh, he's gotten up. He's, oh, he's, he's up. He's run it up, run it off. hobbling back to position. Cammy Brown, two tries to his name so far this season. It's vital to also try and weather this little storm for Gala and get it at half time, 12 6 up. If they can do that, it's been a good first half for them and you know a good end to the half for Gala, certainly. 
Yeah, Gallif come right back into this. But yeah, Kel, you know, over the piece, over the 40 minutes, Kelso, I would say good value for a 12-6 lead. And that's another good line out for Kelso. He's been a good source of possession. Cami Thompson half at the touchline so far this afternoon. And that is indeed half time. Andy Tate putting it out. So an entertaining first half draws to a close here. And what do you make of it so far, Neil? Yeah, very close game. I think the first 20 belonged to Kelso. They, they made hay while the sun shone and they got the two tries and a couple of little silly errors maybe prevent them from getting more. Then Gala just come out of the blocks and, and they said, no, we're, we're not taking this. And fair play to them. And as you say, a lot of the young guys had guy going down in the back row playing eight and just smart thinking on the on the hoof. And big Thomas see his carries like a demon all day. And he, he's, he's went a bit quiet the last five minutes, whatever. But yeah, look, Gala are well in this game and Kel Kelso will be Happy with the first half work, but it's wide open this now. It certainly is. It certainly makes for an interesting second half. This top of the table clash is currently Gala 6, two penalties to Harris Rutherford. Kelso 12, a penalty try, and I think a try we're going to chalk up to the, the Kelso forwards. I think Bruce Neil McNeil probably got the last touch and a conversion, or no conversion rather, obviously a penalty try now is worth seven. So Gala 6. Kelso 12 and we're going to go to Stuart to go round the grounds Yes we are very very shortly in fact I'll give you some latest scores Curry 10, Hoyk 26 GHA 23, Jed Forrest 17, Heritz Blues 28, Musselburgh 14 and Mar 7, Selkirk 10 those are not half time scores they're latest scores at the moment International 1 and it's uh, Air 26, Aberdeen Grammar 5 Gala 3, Kelso 12 Melrose 10, GHK 0 Watsonians 11, Dundee 5. Half time in National 2, Carthur Queen's Park 8, Berwick 19. Dumfries 34 0 is the latest score against Preston Lodge, which is the score of the day at the moment. Of course, Dumfries in 9th, Preston Lodge in 4th place. And Preston Lodge, of course, beat Peebles earlier in the season. Hamilton Bulls 6, Falkirk 12. We've got a half-time scoreline at Kirkcaldy. Kirkcaldy 7, Newton Stewart 8, close match there. And uh, Peebles half-time 19-14 um, against Glasgow Ackies. We'll be crossing for a report on that one from Sam Matthews very, very shortly. But we'll uh, earlier on, of course, Southern Knights um, were taking on Wolves at the Green Yards. It ended 19-21. I think we can bring in uh, Alan Lorimer for his full-time report. The final score from the Green Yards is Southern Knights 19. Sterling Wolves 21. Sterling Wolves pulled off a dramatic win by overturning Knight's 19-0 half-time lead with a measured second-half performance that was aided by Knight's losing two players to the sin bin in quick succession. In the first half, Knights looked in control after weathering non-stop pressure by Wolves for the first 10 minutes. Then the Knights found touch with a 50-22 kick and it was the start of a try spree with touchdowns from Aidan Cross, Sam Derrick and Michael M. Board and two conversions by Derek Colvin for a 19-0 interval lead. But playing with the wind, Sterling ate into Knights' lead, scoring through George Arnott and Ryan Southern, both converted by Marcus Holden. Then when Knights were reduced to 13, Sean Kennedy exploited space to level the scores at 19 all. Liam Brims kicked the conversion for a 21-19 lead. Knights had a chance close to full time, only for Carl McGee to miss a penalty in front of the posts, leaving Wolves joyous winners. Final score at the Green Yards, Southern Knights 19, Sterling Wolves 21. <laughs> Hello, this is George Ingalls here and I'm thrilled that my songs are now available on two albums, Anthology and Lockdown Blues. It's late in the evening She's wondering what clothes to wear Both available on iTunes to download and stream. I am the train, been gone since 69 George Ingalls Anthology and Lockdown Blues. Check them out now on iTunes and other digital sites. To commemorate the 7th anniversary of the opening of the Borders Railway, an 8 DVD box set is now available featuring the complete series Borders Railway from start to finish, plus the full hour and a half documentary Five Years On, which examines the possibility of an extension to Carlisle, plus extra features including a cab journey along the entire Borders Railway, all for the special price of just £14.99, including post and packing. You can get your copy direct from hotdisk.co.uk slash shop. That's hotdisk.co.uk slash shop. 
the 8 DVD box set, The Complete Borders Railway, is available now. Hi, Nicky Walker here, Curriculum Learning Manager for Sports and Outdoor Activities at Borders College. Have you ever considered turning your passion for sport into a rewarding career? If so, then why not get in touch at borderscollege.ac.uk forward slash sport. Borders College, regionally focused, globally engaged. Based in Galish Hills, but covering the whole region and beyond, Borders Mortgage Hub is your one-stop shop for all things mortgage-related in the Borders. Visit us at bordersmortgagehub.com or call us on 01896 807 008. That's 01896 807 008. Borders Mortgage Hub. Mortgages for the Borders in the Borders. When the weather's dreech and the storms are brewing, you need a strong, windproof, quality umbrella delivered with good old-fashioned customer service and at an affordable price. Up here in Umbrella Heaven, we say you tackle the ball, we'll tackle the weather. UmbrellaHeaven.com. Brave the storm. This is, this is Borders Rugby Special on Borders Rugby Radio. I think we can go over to, Man- to not Mansfield Park, Millenni Park uh, for a halftime report from Curry against Hoyk. Here's Hugh Brown. A fast and furious 40 minutes saw Hoyk score four tries for the first time this season. Gareth Welsh with the first in seven minutes. Then the referee awarded the penalty try in 20 minutes. A pushover score from scrum from the scrum by skipper Matty Carrier. And finally, number four came from fly half Jay Linton in a super solo run. At half time here at Millenni Park, it's Curry 10, Hoyt 26. OK, thank you very much indeed to Hugh Brown there down at Millenni Park. Great news for Hoyt, they're still unbeaten. Uh, later scores then, uh, we have GHA 23, Jed Forest 17. Uh, still waiting for news from uh, Glasgow Hawks against Edinburgh Ackies, but it's uh, Heritage Blues 28, Musselburgh 14. This is all in the Premiership. Mar 7, Selkirk 10. Into National 1, Air 26, Aberdeen Grammar 5. It's uh, Gallagher three Kelso sorry Gala six Kelso 12 at half time uh, Melrose 10 nil up against GHA GHK should I say Sterling County five bigger seven is a half time scoreline and Watsonians 11 Dundee five Dundee not traveling very well but very good at Mayfield at their home ground of course they lost uh, by one point last week to Melrose International two Carthur Queens Park eight and it's uh, Berwick now 24 and Aidan Rosie tries so Berwick in charge there uh, Dumfries 34 Preston Lodge nil is an extraordinary uh, scoreline at the moment at the interval Hamilton Bulls 6 who are bottom of the table uh, Falkirk uh, 12 Kirkcaldy 14 now they've just taken the lead Kirkcaldy 14 Newton Stewart 8 they're unbeaten of course at the moment Peebles uh, 19 uh, Glasgow Ackies 14 is a half time scoreline and into the East League 2 uh, Ewan Welsh covering that one for us half time there Hoytlandine 3 Langham 22 so we're back here at Netherdale some interesting uh, scorelines coming in here uh, Robin up and down the country but a fantastic result at the moment for Hoyk at Maleni Park but of course as we've seen all season Curry do like to come from behind yeah, you're 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 absolutely right. We've we've been exactly here before. You know the similar type scenario when they were at home to GHA, but Hoyk are a different proposition to GHA. And yeah, Hoyk with a bonus point. Now Hoyk have kind of almost been devoid of bonus points this season. But if Hoyk can leave there with a bonus point win, then that is a real statement of intent from them, and it's looking very good for them at the moment. Absolutely, we're still trying to get news, as I say, from Glasgow Hawks and Rackets because that is going to be a, a crucial scoreline to, to look at at the moment uh, as well. Heriot's Blues, um, uh, 28-14 up against Musselburgh. That's the, the bottom of the table clash, 10th against 9th. Yeah, and I did say before the game that I fancied Harriets to, to come away with the points. And yeah, I stand by that, funnily enough. Uh, yeah, I, I think Harriets are going to have, we're, we're, we're always going to have too much today and must have looked like they're struggling a wee bit although you know it's still early in the piece six six or seven games gone absolutely and of course uh, sometimes we look at results and we just can't believe them 34 nil at halftime Dumfries who are like the whipping boys of national two beating Newton Stewart who beat Peebles who are ahead of course against Glasgow Ackies at the moment it doesn't make sense it's a strange old division that one isn't it no we certainly didn't see that one coming but yeah I here's hoping that Dumfries can hold out okay let's go back then uh, to the match the Glad Gal have just come onto the pitch Kelso already there the second half half commentary it's rather interestingly poised Gala 6 Kelso 12 it certainly is interestingly poised and it would take a brave man to 
put his money on the line and call this one. Kelso raced into a 12-0 lead and they were very good value for it, but Galav clawed their way back into it to an extent. They've not been able to breach the, the try line, Neil, but they, aye, they, they've got six points back and it's anybody's game. Yeah, it's definitely anyone's game at this point. Benji gets the first score, could make a big difference. Yeah, indeed, and it's Gala to kick off. They now are attacking the factory end here and Kelso returned the favour, but it was taken in by Harris Rutherford and he's put it high into the air. That's been allowed to bounce and it's now bounced into touch. You know, it, it was actually kicked out on the full by the looks of things by Murray Hasty. so it's going to be a line out to Gala just outside the Kelso 22 first possession of the half for them their line it was a bit shaky in the first half you have to be honest and say so they'll be looking to make amends here and secure some quick ball Thomas Glendinning James Glendinning I beg your pardon to throw in but again it's been stolen it was Keith Melbourne at the front who got up highest there so it's now Kelso in possession, three or four metres outside their own 22. Tate's at the base of this. And it's, oh, it's been charged down by Glenn McCrum and it's fallen into the hands of Marius Tamasitas and he's on the charge. He releases it to Taylor Wilson. So Gala now in the ascendancy. In the, the 22, oh, it's a good hit on Liam Scott, the Gala captain by Cami Thompson, the Kelso blindside flanker. Now it's the other prop, Glenn Bruff, on the charge and now Bruff has made two or three metres as well. So just the start to the second half that Gala wanted here. Now here comes the Gala forwards again round the... Oh, and that's good counter-rucking from Kelso. Again, it was Keith Melbourne. That's his second contribu strong contribution to the second half. And it was taken in by Bruce McNeil. So Kelso with the opportunity to, to clear. And they've done that through the culture left boot of Murray Hasty, And that was a really big intervention from Keith Melbourne there. Yeah, that's what, he, that's what he's good at. And Keith, you know, he's got everything in his armoury and we needed it there. And Andy Tate just getting caught at the back of the ruck there, just maybe a little bit rushed and not organised. And I mean, I think I think Glenn McCrum would be offside, but it, it, when you've only got a referee and no way out, that, that's what you need to do. And uh, great great play by him. And he put the castle under the cuffs there. And he just sometimes got to get off the park, Robin, and reset. And that's what Murray's done here. So Yeah, it's a good kick. And it's another line out to Gala. It's been taken cleanly by Liam Scott on that occasion. So here comes Mitchell. Mitchell out the back to Rutherford. And it's through the hands. John Turnbull's on. And John Turnbull sells a dummy and go. John Turnbull into the 22. Has he been held up there? No, he gets the ground. John Turnbull. So here come Gala again. Now it's the converted hooker, Josh Irvin, who takes it in. And there's a penalty coming here. The shrill of the whistle has been taken quickly by the scrum half, Johnson. Has he got isolated, Johnson? No, it's going to come back on the Gala side. McCrum's going to play scrum half. McCrum to Glenn Bruff. Bruff on the charge. Up towards the five metre line. Here comes Stevie Cairns. Stevie Cairns up towards the line round the corner. Can Stevie Cairns reach over? No, he's been held up short. But here they come again. Now it's Tamasitas. Tamasitas is over and Tamasitas has scored. The crowd will tell you that. That is exactly the start to the second half that Gala wanted. And nobody's going to stop that man from that range. No. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, for all Kelso's frailties and... and Whatever they, they got wrong there, you've got to give Gala huge credit. They just kept coming at Kelso there, even when Murray got off the park. They, for once, they had a great line out, and it uh, just shows you, I've been saying at the start of the game, if this Gala team get ball, they're going to Kels cause Kelso all kinds of problems, and that just proved it there. That's been coming for me since the, since the whistle went at half time. They've just come out of the blocks, and great try. And you say, Thomas Eaters from there, you're not going to stop them. Uh, Kelso, maybe in certain ways, masters his own downfall, but Gala, great credit to them. Yeah, and the most straightforward of conversions has been taken by Harris Rutherford. So it's now Gala 13, Kelso 12, three minutes into this second half. And he, he was Gala star man in the in the first half. You know, he's won a Gala star man full stop and that's a deserved score for the big man. And it's going to be Kelso to get us back underway. Dwayne Patterson, again, decent kickoff by Patterson going to give his forwards a chance it's been taken in there cleanly caught I think that was Archie Cowens who offered himself up for plenty of work in the first half and Cowens has won the penalty for his Kelso team and just what the doctor ordered I would imagine Neil yeah that's that's Kelso needed a bit of assertiveness and go for it and Archie Cowens takes it well in the air and it certainly was uh, no release like uh, I think it might have been Liam Scott that's his game and he just didn't have any release it was a penalty but I think uh, Gallo will be disappointed from their point of view if, if Dwayne Patterson can convert this it sort of chalks off you know three of the points that they've gained and 
yeah, be careful badly need this to go over because, you know, they've not scored since about the 20th minute or something like that. They need to get back the scoreboard ticking, so, yeah, they need Dwayne Patterson to put this over. Yeah, Dwayne Patterson going to take us a beautiful kick-off from Dwayne Patterson. He gave us forwards every opportunity and Archie Cowens was the first man on the scene and it wasn't even a palm back. He caught that as clean as you like. Gala with a penalty, so... Dwayne Patterson just outside the gala, 22, maybe five or so metres to the left of the posts as he looks to them, kicking towards the Ferry Dean end here at Netherdale. Begins his run at Patterson. Decent strike. The flags go up before the ball was over the bar. No problem at all to Dwayne Patterson. So, Kelso back in front. Gala 13, Kelso 15, and we've picked up where we left off. Yeah, there's... Charlie Marshall's now come on the field who didn't start the game, I don't know why, he looks heavily strapped up there, but he's just come on the park for Jimmy Gordon, so... Yeah, so a couple of substitute props on for Kelso now, as the kickoff goes into the arms of Bruce McNeil, he's now on the charge, he's been well tackled by Taylor Wilson, and that's spilled out there, did that go forward? Yeah, the referee has deemed that it had, it was gathered in there by Cammy Brown and he sent it down the park, but... It had been spilled out the contact and now it's a attacking Gallus scrum. It's ebbing and flowing this game. The, the best two teams in the division. <laughs> two coach killers uh, for one for Stuart Johnson at that end, uh, given the pit and then this one by experienced Bruce McNeil. I don't know if there's a hand in the, from Gala, whatever way, it, it's a scrum to Gala and uh, just a, a complete and utter coach killer both ways. Gala's just done one and now Kelso's given the favour back. So see what happens here. Yeah, Taylor Wilson. The Gala blindside with the tackle on McNeil, McNeil, a McNeil that was in full flight and Wilson went low. And it's going to be a Gala scrum here just outside the Kelso 22, six or seven metres infield. Lachlan Johnson to feed parity in the scrum, but that's a decent shot. Oh, it's a better than decent shove by Kelso and that's going to result in a Kelso scrum. And yeah, that's a that's a statement of intent by Kelso there with two substitute props on the field. Yeah, that's you know still young. It's young Ashton still there, and yeah, look, I, I think they're a little bit unlucky there, Kelso, not to get the penalty because although Gala knocked it on, probably that was the first infringement. But Kelso was still going over the top, and you see many a referee maybe give a penalty there, but good work from the Kelso pack to, to hustle that ball back. Yeah, um, it was a big shunt by Kelso, and you're absolutely right. That could quite easily have resulted in a. A Kelso penalty, but either way, it's going to be a Kelso scrum in exactly the same position. Gala 13, Kelso 15. Seven minutes gone here in the second half as the, the sun seems to have disappeared and the temperatures dropped just a wee bit here at Netherdale. And it's now Kelso looking to escape from this position just outside the Gala 22 taking their time to get set, these two front rows, now Kelso will feel in the back of that last scrum that they've got a bit of ascendancy here as Tate feeds, and they've got a bit of a shunt on here again, Kelso, has it gone down, it has indeed, and it's gone down illegally so if you're a Gala fan so it's a Kelso penalty and yeah, chalk that one down to a combined forward effort, the coach, coaches will be absolutely delighted by that, Bruce McNeil in particular I'm, I'm delighted for young Ashton Asante in there, 18 year old, you know, he's actually propping at the moment against Thomas Cetus and yeah, Kelso's scrum going well at the moment. As Hasty sends it towards the touchline but he doesn't make the touchline, it's been taken in there by Keith Young, Keith Young back at the club after a stint away and he's made decent ground there Keith Young but he's tackled eventually by Cammy Brown, his opposite number, now Gala just inside the Kelso half, Cairns out the back door to... Harris, who in turn, Harris Rutherford rather, who in turn fed Andrew Mitchell. Mitchell makes ground now, 10 or so metres. Glenn McCrum off, offers himself up for work so often, Glenn McCrum. And he's stolen another metre or two on Gala's behalf there. Back it comes, Liam Scott. Liam Scott with the pop out to Glenn Bruff. Bruff still going, taking to ground. It's going to come back on the Gala side. Johnson again goes down the blind side this time. Numbers over for Gala here and it's back inside, oh no it's a dummy and it's back inside now to Stevie Cairns and Gala in for the second try off the half and this game has opened up Stevie Cairns wants to send the Christmas present to Murray Hasty. that just proves you cannot miss touch you cannot do that at this level 
and Kelso have had this many times this season so far and they've gone away with it today not, they didn't get away with that one at the end of the day all Kelso need at the moment is set piece set piece because they're winning every set piece open play is Gala's territory here and they're loving life out there so you can't give them that easy ball and uh, unfortunately there Murray hasty misses touch try time yeah, you, you know, you say it's happened a few times this season. This is obviously the best team that Kelso have come up against and they've been they've been punished on that occasion probably a minute or two, not even after the kick to touch was missed. Stevie Cairns was rampaging over the line. Takes it to Gala, 18, Kelso 15 in this ding-dong ding of a game and it's Harris Rutherford about to start the run-up exactly 15 metres infield. So Rutherford, here he comes. Good strike by Rutherford. The flags again go up before the ball is over the bar. That takes us to Gala 20, Kelso 15. And you spoke about coach killers, Neil. Oh, you know, Kelso just... It's hard to believe, you know, the way they've played, that they, would, they wouldn't think that just get the ball off the park. Ten, you know, 50 metres up from your 22 is fine, Robin. You're clearing your lines. It's Kelso ball. I don't think the gamble button had to be pressed there. They just weathered the storm. And then Gala punished them. And well played to Gala because it was a good try. Yeah, and a, a, another great kickoff there. And again, it's been gathered in. Great kickoff by Dwayne Patterson. And it was taken in cleanly by Keith Melbourne, almost with a hand being laid on him. So here come Kelso again. End to end stuff here at Netherdale. Out to Hasty. Hasty out to the Kelso winger there. I think that was Angus Roberts with a decent enough run. Run so here's Melbourne again. Now Melbourne, oh, Melbourne tries to offload it and does so. Acrobatic stuff, but oh, the referees deemed that to go forward. I'm not sure I'm in agreement, but he's an awful lot closer than I am, Neil. But it didn't look to go forward, but as you say, maybe maybe it just did and he's seen it. I don't know. Yeah, maybe a wee bit of the old Harlem globe trotters there from Melbourne when he'd been better served maintaining possession. There's another substitute comes on for Kelso and it's. Keith McNeil, who's going to depart. The big figure of Keith McNeil. Be interesting to see what impact that has on the, the set piece. Obviously, a fair bit of ballast coming through to that front row from the Kelso second row. The two Keiths, a couple of big old beasts. But it's going to be a gala scrum. Three to four metres outside their own 22. Fairly central. Lachlan Johnson. He feeds... Much more parity on that scrum. Although it's starting to creak on the Gala side now, but it's came back to Johnson. He sent it down the field, but that's going to go out in the full, and that's a, a cheap error by Johnson. It, it wasn't even close, you've got to say. And yeah, just possibly nerves starting to creep in. It's a, it's a big game, Neil. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And again, Gala just done something similar to Kelso. You just have to, you know, steady away and give a bit of rush of blood there and straight out in the full. And, Gives Kelso a bit of party, a bit of territory, and if Kelso can do something with it, it would, they certainly need to, to, to make up for that by the try they just gave away. Yeah, and one of Kelso's strengths this afternoon has been the line out, and that's been beautifully taken in there from a first class throw in. So Kelso looking to rumble it here, inching forward, not at 100 miles an hour, you have to say. So Tate, oh no, I was going to say Tate just about intervened, but it was taken forward by a Kelso forward, now here comes Bruce McNeil, and it's Bruce McNeil with that famous charge of his, and he's made five or so metres, Bruce McNeil, now it's Tate, and Tate's got another runner from the forwards, that being Archie C C uh, Cowens, now it's Tate, now here comes Frankie Robson, Kelso captain, he goes to ground, Kelso now into the gala, 22, centre field, here comes Melbourne again, no offloads this time from Keith Melbourne, takes a metre or so, now... Here, oh, it's a lovely step and go from Cami Thompson, the blindside flanker. Now it's back in the arms of Tate, and it was Tate with a big runner coming there. The shoulder was put in by Glenn McCrum. Speaking of big runners, here comes Bruce McNeil. McNeil sets it up. Seldom ever loses the ball, McNeil. And here comes, I think that's Melbourne in there doing the hard yards. Kelso knocking at the door now up towards the gala, the gala line. They're within the five metre line. It's Robson, there's a Gala player in over that, but it's kind of coming back cleanly on the Kelso side. Tate, oh, there's a hand in there, and that's going to be a penalty. That could be more than a penalty. There's a Gala hand in there playing the nine. Oh, and it's been, yeah, it's been intercepted by Harris Rutherford, but they're going to come back for the penalty, and 
Gala might be doing well to have 14, uh, 15 players on the park here. That would surely be a yellow, would it not? Could he give away a penalty like that close to the line and not? It was a, you know, it looked for all the world from up. Oh, and Kelsey have gone quickly. I'm yeah. very surprised that he's not given a yellow there. I'm very surprised. Ah, that was an, almost as professional a foul as you're likely to see for my money anyway, Neil. Right on the, you know, you're basically a yard from the line, you yeah. know. Yeah, the shot, you know, un, right under the dot of the posts as well. I think Gala have got away with one there. Personally, I know you're fully impartial today. Yeah, it's hard. It's <laughs> difficult. I, I mean, I give Gala a lot of credit. They've been good as well. They've, they've had their patches and they've made their mistakes, but very even game, but just, you know... Kelso need to try and take advantage now when they've, when they've got the ball here at this point. And I'm not sure the scrum's just as strong as it was. Uh, Jamie Gordon was on before, I just I don't know. Kelso just getting an edge on it now, but they were certainly dominant before, which would have been a, a big uh, help here, but we'll see how this scrum goes. So, yeah, they've elected to take a scrum here, as I say, right in the shadow of the posts, right under the post, five metres from the Gala line, they've split the backs. Will it make the backs? The shunt comes on, it's at the feet of Bruce McNeil. Will, will Bruce McNeil pick and go? Oh, he's fumbled it, Bruce McNeil. But that, no, it's obviously went backwards and he's picked up and gone. He's been held up, gets to ground. Now they come round the corner. It's just slowed up a little bit. Now here comes Asante. Asante with a carry, he's just short. The substitute, Kelsa Prop. Now it's Andy Tate. Andy Tate's got Melbourne. Melbourne goes low. Is Melbourne over? No, He's just short, no. Keith Melbourne. Tate again. Tate's at the base. Tate snipes and goes. Is Tate over? Is Tate is over. And Tate has drawn the scores level here at Netherdale with a classic scrum half try. And yeah, as we said before, Neil, this game, it's, it's, it's opened up in the second half and it really is ebbing and flowing now. Yeah, it has since the second half. I mean, Gala came out and set their stall out. They were, you know, I mean, Kelso did make a... You know, that missed touch gave, uh, gave Gala the impetus to go for it, but they, the try they took was very good at open play with the dummy, as you said before, Stevie Kerr. And now Kelso's come back. They've had to work a lot harder as Gala did for their score, but they've got there. As you say, great snipe play from Andy Tate just to finish it off. Yeah, Andy Tate. The ex barrack man, of course. And it's going to be Dwayne Patterson with another conversion attempt to take Kelso back into the lead in this ding-dong. 15, 16 minutes gone in this second half. It's 20 points apiece. And yeah, the, the, these are, you know, the table doesn't lie. I've seen a bit of rugby. Uh, National won this season. The table does not lie. These are the two best teams in the division on show today as Patterson lines this one up. 16 metres infield. A kickable penalty for Patterson, but it is a wee bit breezy out there again. Here he comes. Decent strike, decent kick from Patterson. Oh no, it's drifted across the front of the posts. The Gala crowd are happy with that. So it remains 20 points all, and we have got a game on here at Netherdale. It's going to be Gala to kick off. Just looking to see if there's any changes. But I think we are as was as the kickoff's taken Bruce McNeely doesn't charge that time he sends it back to Murray Hasty, and on that occasion Murray Hasty's found his touch so it's going to be another gala line out maybe 16-17 uh, metres outside the Kelso 22 that's a better option than trying to play out uh, Robin for me it's a good enough kick just about good enough just to you know look at the two ga Kelso obtained from the kickoff against Gala that the last thing he needs things like that you've got to make Gala work for it a bit more and you know set piece might suit Kelso yeah it's certainly they've certainly had the upper hand in the set piece so far this afternoon but that's a better line from Gala to Liam Scott that's not the best of passes from Johnson however and it was really well controlled with the boot by Andrew Mitchell and he's managed to set up good play by Mitchell there now Bruff has become more prominent in the second half Stop he's taken it in but oh, yeah that's a, what's he doing Oh, now he the, gave it the right way. Oh, and there was a bit of back chat there as well from oh, the Kelso player. Well, I'm not surprised. I mean, I, I hate Kelso back chatting, but I'm not surprised. Melbourne had that all day long for me. I don't know how how the referee's seen it. He gave it that way to start with as well. Oh, he it, changed his mind. It, so it, that's what I was going to say. It looked like he was going to extend the arm for yeah. a Kelso penalty. Then he very quickly changed it to a Gala penalty, and obviously that's not gone down too well in certain quarters out there because somebody said something and he's marched them back into a much more 
kickable gala position so it's going to be Harris Rutherford almost bang in front right on the 22 he's been good with the boot so far today Rutherford he's four from four two penalties two conversions this you would imagine will bring up his third penalty as he starts the run up crowd falls silent oh he's he's oh. tugged that he's my word, I can barely believe that. He's tugged that to the left of the uprights, and that is a right. real chance going back. How crucial could this be? It could be when you seen Dwayne Parsons kick just moments ago, the wind didn't half pull it away, and I, I don't think that was anything to do with the wind. He just hooked it. Uh, very unlike Harris. Uh, for the, Harris has had a great game today so far. His kicking's been on the money, and yeah, that's a total let off for Kel, so they can count their lucky stars there because that, that should have been three points. Yeah, how vital could that be come? full time it remains Gala 20 Kelso 20 almost halfway through this second half as we approach the final quarter of the game anybody's game as it stands and it's the drop the dropouts taken in by Gala and here they come again looking to mount an attack now Kelso could counter ruck this but no it's taken in by Tamasitas Tamasitas bounces off the first man Again makes 3-4 metres Tamasitas, he's been outstanding this afternoon, it comes back to Rutherford, Rutherford the grubber but that's not came off, so it's Gala going to have to retreat but they've managed to maintain possession. It's Glenn Dinning who feeds out to the forward, that's Bruff, another carry for him in this second half and it looks like it's going to come back yet, yeah, Rutherford, now Rutherford fancies a, a run here but he's been well marshalled by the Kelso defence. And so, yeah, Lachlan Johnson's had enough and he puts it down the park right into the arms of the Kelso fullback, Herman, who takes the mark. Yeah, and Kelso could do with just a little bit of a breather. I think everyone could, but Gala, when Gala get the pace up and they've got possession, I'm very impressed with Gala on the hoof. Like the, the, the collisions they win, Thomas Eaters to the fore most times, but a few of their other players as well, especially Liam Scott, Young Glenn Dinan, big Andrew Mitchell, they get over the gain line. Yeah, and we're going to, as that gets sent to the touchline, it's going to be a gala line out, three metres inside the Kelso half. So a, a tough one to call this now. Two evenly matched outfits. Gala, have, Kelso certainly had the bet in the first half, but Gala have come right back into it in this second half as that man, Tamasitas, has got his hands more and more on the ball. He's been ably assisted in that regard by his fellow prop, Glenn Bruff, who's become more prominent. So line out. To Gala, it's, they've made another mess of that, but it's been more. Oh, it's been beautifully mopped up by. I think that was Scott, and he he offloaded as well. That was really good play by Liam Scott. Gala maintaining possession only just again another carry in there. I think that was Bruff. Stevie Cairns is down at the moment for Gala, so operating with 14 men. Here they come again. John Turnbull, 2022 Gala brawl lad. Not got much room in which to work here, Gala, on this near side, but that was a good grubber by Callum Pate, but it's came into the hands of Herdman. Clearing out by the Kelso players. There's a bit of chat going on there between the two number 14s. Blind, it's on blind. Yeah, yeah oh, and that's been fumbled by Kelso. That's been knocked on, and now Gala have got numbers on that far side. Liam Scott takes off. Scott's got men outside. Glenn Dinning comes back infield. Glendinning with the ball in one hand, that's a big bump off by Glendinning, I think that was on Murray Hasty. wee bit of a mismatch there, in fairness to Hasty. now, speaking of mismatches, here comes Tamasitis, but he's, oh, he's been injured, Tamasitis, i almost seen that straight away, he went lame as soon as he went into the contact. Was just in the tackle, he got bent the wrong way, yeah. did he, yeah, just a bit unlucky there, Tamasitis, it'd be a real shame if he's okay, because he's been tremendous today, Robin, he's been a, if not the best player in the park, they're about it anyways. Especially in the loose. Yeah, and Stevie Cairns now, who was a an early introduction for Ewan Dodds. He now looks like he's coming to the sidelines injured. And I think that's Jay Coltman who's replacing him. Is going to go Stuart and go around the grounds. OK, let's have a little look at uh, the scoreboards as they say. It's Curry 15, it's Hoyk 26. Hoyk with the bonus point already. GHA 28, Jed Forrest 31 now. Uh, that's a try from Lewis Young to add to Blake Roth, Paolo Ferreira and Callum Young's effort. So 28-31, Jed Forrest leading there. GHA, of course, have lost to the other two border sides in the Premiership. Uh, latest we have Glasgow Hawks 8, Edinburgh Ackies 10. 
Heriot's Blues were 28 nil up. Now listen to this. Heriot's Blues 28, Musselburgh 21 now. And of course we know that early in the season, Musselburgh were scoring try bonuses against the likes of Curry. So plenty of rugby left in that game. And uh, Selkirk have taken the lead again at Mar. It's now Mar 12. Selkirk 18, a Scott McClymont try there. International 1, it's Air 31, Aberdeen Grammar 5. Here it's Stephen Stevens, Gala 20, Kelso 20, Melrose 29 with a bonus point, GHK 5. Now the match between Stumel and Highland still hasn't kicked off. The referee was late arriving, he still hasn't got there, so uh, they'll probably need the floodlights, except they don't have them at Inverleith, so we'll be uh, finding out what happens there later on. Stirling County 5, Bigger 7, and Watsonians 11, Dundee 5. And uh, quickly in East League 2, Hoytlandine 6, Langham 27 is a later score. Oh, we must just tell you, Peebles 33 now, Glasgow Ackies 14, and Berwick are in front at Carthur Queen's Park, Berwick 30. Carthur 13, so a good day for the boarders at the moment. Yeah, and you rejoin us here. Thankfully, Tamasi is as good to go, so it's a gala scrum. Oh, it's good harrying from Andy Tate on Johnson, but it's came back on the gala side. Gala with a scrum there on the Kelso 22. Maintain possession. Now here comes Coltman, who's come on for his first touch, and that's a half-decent first carry from him. This rangy player. But Kelso are in over that. I think it's been stolen by Kelso. Oh, so right this oh, way again. Yeah, McNeil was over that. And I can't see what, how he's given that. He I certainly just, wasn't off his feet anyway. No, he's given it for as if he didn't retreat round, but Bruce McNeil came from the back there. However, it's been given and that's it. So Yeah, I didn't. I, I must admit, Neil, I didn't see a lot wrong with that. I thought it looked pretty fair. Yeah. And it's, I it's good, sorry, it's good to see big Thomas Titus is okay because uh, he's, been, he's been brilliant today. And I know for a Kelsey point of view, if he was off the field, it would be better, but you'd never wish anyone to get injured and he's been great. Just to nip in here, a couple of uh, important updates. Curry 20 now, Hoyk 26, they're on the comeback trail. And also Jed Forrest now behind 35-31 at GHA. Yeah, and from the resulting penalty that went in Gala's favour, it's going to be Harris Rutherford, who made a real mess of the last attempt. Very similar position to this one, so he'll be looking to make amends. Just on the 22, fairly central. Harris Rutherford, here he goes. Better strike from Rutherford, and that dissects the upright, so Gala take the lead here, 23 points to 20, we maybe between 10 and 15 minutes remaining on the clock, and it's game on you. Yeah, it's a fine line, that penalty could have went either way, and then we're still 20 all up the pitch, but as it was, the ref gave that, and it was well uh, put over by Harris Rutherford, he's put the demons to bed, and Gala just edging this game now. Yeah, and Jamie Gordon's came back on by the looks of things for Kelso now here comes another Patterson restart and again it's another decent looking restart has that been knocked forward by the Kelso forward the on-rushing Kelso forward yes it has so it's going to be a gala scrum over on the far side from this stand position here at Netherdale Kelso have almost gained ascendancy back with every with every kickoff so far has such has been the quality of Patterson's restarts, but this is going to be a gala scrum. Five metres outside their own 22, five metres in from touch. They'll be looking to take the sting out of any Kelso attack for the next five minutes or so, Gala, you would imagine. Because Gala, yeah, they've Gala have coughed up scores upon scoring. Good scrum again from Kelso, but something illegal in there. Deems Neil Muir and Kelso just starting to fall foul of the referee a wee bit and that's going to give Gala just a, a chance to clear their lines and work again from the resulting line out. It's difficult to see what it was, I don't know what it was. Kelso certainly going forward in the scrum but as you see nowadays sometimes that doesn't make for good reading if the referee's seen something at an angle or something maybe there but apparently Gala. And Harris Rutherford sent it to the touchline. 15 metres or so of territory gained so it's now going to be a gala line out almost equidistant between their own 10 metre line and the halfway line and again it's going to be James Glendinning with the throw in he goes to the front that time Taylor Wilson was up and somehow gala have managed to get it back so it wasn't the cleanest of line outs but here comes Andrew Mitchell in the midfield Mitchell still going gives his forwards the opportunity to come round behind him now here they come against, missed out Tamasitis, I think it was intended for him. It's been taken in by Liam Scott. Liam Scott thought about kicking that and 
His fellow back rowers done exactly that, James Glendinning, and he's not made a bad fist of it, Glendinning, and he's off after it as well, the young man. He's got a bit of pace, but he's been stepped there. That's good play by Herdman. And that's really good play. Now, is that going to go out on the full? No, it's a good kick, and that's good mopping up play. And, yeah, a couple of youngsters, good play all round. Quality for Liam Herdman to get out of there, because Kerso were under a lot of pressure. He just beats two men and puts a nice steady kick up field, and... Kelso but the leaves there, Gala just edging this at the moment, they've just got a bit more impetus as Kelso, Kelso need to get the ball and start playing again, get a bit of a foothold in the game and take it to Gala, if not Gala just look like they could get home for here if Kelso can't wrestle back the momentum Yeah and another Kelso substitute, Fergus Common is on he's going to form part of this Gala line out which has functioned a bit better in the second half you have to say and here it comes again, oh it's Kelso the commentator but they've somehow managed to get it back, I don't know how Again, wasn't clean. Tamasitas managed to get a bit, a big mitt to it as he stood stationary at the back. And here they come again. Link, that's Liam Scott in with a carry. Not making too much metres, but he's going to regurgitate possession for his scrum half. Johnson. Johnson to Rutherford. Rutherford's dropped into the pocket. He was under pressure, but he's managed to get the kick away. Now, has that come off the right of the boot? No, it's a good kick by Rutherford. has been taken in by the Kelso player. And now it's back to Herdman. Was that taken back into 22 by Kelso? No, it's no, gonna no, he was caught ahead in the 22. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be a gala line out. Decent enough kick there from Kelso. But Gala's yeah. line out hasn't been good, but they seem to have gotten away with quite a few off the tail and stuff. They've still mopped up well, so yeah, fair play to them. Yeah, bit, maybe been a wee bit of luck there. Uh, yeah. You know, just just literally the way the ball bounces ultimately off those outstretched hands. That's a better line out than Liam yeah, Scott. Good line out off the top from him. Got in too, caught in two minds a wee bit there, Andrew Mitchell, there's a Kelso player right over the ball, but he's been That's cleared up yeah. yeah. Aye, that was a, you got caught a wee bit in two minds there, Mitchell, and he kind of run away from his, run away from his support, and Kelso were quick in over the ball. I think it was Murray Hastie was lying, just kind of got his body in the way to make the penalty, and he got cleared out. Yeah, from an awful rate, quite a big rate, it could be a sore one that. Okay, an update from uh, Millenni Park, Curry 25, Hoyk 29 is a leader score. And how about this one, GHA 35, Jed Forrest 36, Clark Skeldon going over for Jed's fifth try. Uh, Glasgow Hawks 8, Edinburgh Ackies 10 is a later score. Heriot's Blues 28 nil up, they were at 28-21 now against Musselburgh. And uh, Selkirk still have the lead at Fullerton Park, they've always had a good record record against Mar. It's currently Mar 12, Selkirk 18. National 1, it's 38-5 now to air against Aberdeen Grammar. Gala 23, Kelso 20 down here at Netherdale. Melrose 29, GHK 5 and I think we can go for a quick halftime report on that one from Alan Lorimer. That was the late kickoff. The halftime score at the Green Yards is Melrose 29, GHK 5 and Melrose firmly in control here having scored five tries to GHK's one in the first half. The five includes a, a hat-trick by Archie Pilcher and one apiece by fullback Hamish Weir and centre Donald Crawford. Two conversions also by Struan Hutchison. So the half-time score again at the Green Yards is Melrose 29, GHK 5. Thank you, Alan Lorimer, doing a double shift today. Of course, he was at the Southern Knights game earlier when it was 21-19 to Sterling Wolves after uh, Southern Knights were 19-0 up at halftime. Andy Tate still down, injured at the moment. So you're, sorry, Murray Hasty, so you're uh, missing absolutely nothing at the moment. Let's quickly go into National 2. Carthur Queen's Park 25, Berwick 38 now. Bonus points secured for Berwick. Dumfries 34, Preston Lodge 7. Hamilton Bull haven't won this season right at the bottom they're leading today against Falkirk would you believe 18-12 there Kirkcaldy 14 Newton Stewart 26 and Peebles 33 Glasgow Ackies 14 is the latest score and you're back just in time to see Dwayne Patterson send the ball to the touchline and he's made decent territory there Neil so it's going to be a Kelso attacking line out right on the gala 22 first bit of meaningful territory for a for maybe 10, 15 minutes for Kelso. What can they do with it? It's going to be the throw in to come from the replacement hooker. It's been gathered. Oh, it's came back. It was almost gala esque. It wasn't the cleanest, but it's been gathered in there by Melbourne and set back. So here come Kelso. Decent carry there. I think that was Edgar, but Hasty, who's recovered. Hasty's caught, however, by Jay Coltman. 
in the middle of the park, but Kelso again maintained possession. Here comes Cowens, tries to steal a meter, but he's driven back in the heavy traffic. McNeil leaves it for Tate, Tate for Melbourne. Herman's in the line. Frankie Robson, Frankie Robson's stolen a metre or two for his charges. Decent counter ruck there by Tamasitas, but it's came back on the Kelso side. Now, Kelso in the ascendancy, they're up into the Gala 22. Hasty again, now Coltman's, eh, I beg your pardon, it's Angus Roberts who had a bit of space in which to work and he's made a few metres, Angus Roberts. Tate again, who's he going to feed this time? Tate feeds Melbourne. And Melbourne maintains possession, but there's a Gala player, oh, there's a Gala player in over there, but it's came back on the Kelso side. Tate's looking for options, looking for instruction. He finds a, a runner in the shape of Asante. The substitute prop. Tate again is round on. There's, there's room here, there's space here for... Oh, and they're over, Kelso. Kelso are in, and it's the ex-Gala man and the current Kelso captain, Frankie Robson, who takes Kelso into the lead. And yeah, it's Kelso 25, Gala 23, and... I would, I would imagine, as far as you're concerned, Neil, again, just what the just what the doctor ordered. But that's good composure. That you know, it's good composure by Kelso. You know what? We're clinical there because we, you mentioned it. We haven't been in the Gala 22 for a long time. We get there. We actually make a few little errors. Keep the ball. Keep the ball. And it just opened up the Gala defence. Maybe just for the first time, you know, left Kelso a little bit easy there. I'm not scared to admit it. But Frankie Robson takes full advantage and. With the time on the clock now, and every got Kelso's fourth try, the club here score four tries. At least they're getting out of here with a point anyways, Robin, and that's a good thing for us at the moment. We've got the point on the board. Can we get the rest? We'll see. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, the conversion goes over. So yeah, yeah. big end coming up now for both teams. Oh yeah, massive few minutes in the context of this season. Let's be honest about it. One team and one team only will go up from this division. So. Games like this will be absolutely vital, as will bonus points, Neil, as you correctly say. That's Kelso leaving here at the very least with one point. And it's going to be Gala to kick off as the substitute scrum half Jack Niven comes on. He's going to replace Lachlan Johnson, who comes towards the touchline. As Callum Pate it's comes forward to take over. Okay, also, don't give away something cheap from this kickoff, given we at this time in the match, Robin, they need to clear this up. Yeah, it's a one score game. Gala 23, Kelso 27, five or so minutes to go, and that's who you want the ball to fall into the arms of from the kickoff. Bruce McNeil, he charges forward. Back to Hasty. Hasty with the up and under. There's a Gala player under this, and it's been taken in well, right on halfway. So Gala now with a chance to attack. Oh, but it's a, it's a Kelso penalty. And both the players and the coaching staff are overjoyed with that decision. It was held in there just a fraction too long. So it's going to be a penalty to Kelso just inside the Gala half. There is Dwayne Patterson going to go back to the mark. Yet yeah, the referee cottoned on to his attempts to steal a metre or two. It is your 21st birthday, son, but back you go. And he puts it down the touchline. So it's going to be a Kelso attacking line out a metre outside the Gala 22. And you feel here any sort of score for Kelso now would be absolutely crucial, particularly if it's a try. And it's going to be a Kelso line out. Kelso line outs functioned well this afternoon as the forwards trundle forward to make up the line. Here it comes as we await the, the throw in. Key moments in the contact of this season. Again, it's messy, but it's came back on the Kelso side. Glenn McCrum had a, a hand in there, but also Andy, here comes Tate, and that's a, I think that is that a Santi with a, a carry, but it's back to Tate again. Tate's marshalling things well at the moment. Good carry by Keith Melbourne. Been prominent in the last few minutes, Melbourne. Again, Kelso, another decent carry. It trundles over into the Gala 22. They're going to keep this tight, Kelso, with a pick and go. And why not? Looking to wind down the clock. They're inching forward now as well. Bruce, they're better than inching forward. Bruce McNeil's off and running. He's been hauled down by Glenn McCrum. That was a great tackle by McCrum. Yeah, he, he stopped him in his tracks, but they've made a lot of ground, Kelso. Now it's backed in. It's a, another good carry on. It's a great offload by Melbourne. Kelso very much in their sense here. Five oh. metres from the Gala line, but yeah, a Gala hand was in there. 
possibly Lee, Liam Scott. It was good defence by Gala on that occasion. The, the right call was made. Just saved them the game that because Kelso, I think one more phase would have probably scored and that gives Gala a chance to come away and try and win the game from here. But that, that would have been the game, I think, one more phase possibly. But uh, well played, Gala. Tremendous defence. Kami Pate, what a tackle. And then, as you say, a steal from Liam Scott. That's what you want. That's what you want. Uh, Liam Scott's a real leader and he steps up to the mark. Yeah, a captain's play there from Liam Scott. He must do that several times a game, but that was a vitally important one. Very much in the shadow of the gala post, so it's going to be a gala line out, which doesn't this afternoon guarantee possession by any stretch of the imagination. But let's see what culminates from this one. They go towards the tail, and it's that man, Scott, who takes it cleanly, and it's ball off the top. It's a messy pass. It's came back into the hands of the substitute of Kyle Scott, and Kyle Scott's tidied that up. The Gala are going to have to go from deep here, just outside the own That's high by two players there. Referee's not seen it. Right on the chin. He copped one there, did Glenn McCrum. Oh, but now Gala back inside. There, I think that's the oh, Callum Pate. Oh, throw, I think. No, and that wasn't. I, did, I think. Did look Logan like a neck roll. And there's, yeah, there's afters there. Logan Edgar, I think it was Jay Coltman. Now, Kelso have stolen possession here and Patterson drops in and Patterson sends it towards the corner is that going to go too far and go over the line yes it is and it's touched down by Pate it's not a bad outcome at this point no it's going to be you need to mark it up though a goal line drop out now are Kelso going to try and look for the forwards here are they going to go as far as possible yeah he's put his foot through it has Harris Rutherford but right into the hands of a Gleeful Kelso player and it's Angus Roberts who's running albeit towards that touchline but he's going to stay in the park so Tate now taking his time as you'd imagine Logan Edgar Kelso maintaining possession winding down the clock Gala 23 Kelso 27 as the clock inches towards full time Kelso leaving here with no less than 1.4 tries in the bag for Kelso no mean feat here at Netherdale. It's Kelso maintaining possession. How long do you think left, Robin? I don't know. Frankie Robson, it's hard to tell because the clock, the scoreboard clock doesn't stop for injuries and there's been two or three. But it's Kelso now inching over the Gala 22, keeping it tight in the heavy traffic. Melbourne, a little bit of footwork there by Keith Melbourne. He goes to ground. Safe Kelso ball. Tate. Tate. Tate's got runners. There's Kelso. Player trucking it into the Gala 22 there. Tate again at the base, the marshal. And that's Asante. Asante's beat a man here. Asante's made five metres, and that's a great carry by the youngster. Bruce McNeil round the corner. Was there a seatbelt challenge in there on McNeil? Referee's happy enough. Tate again. Tate's got Cowens. Cowens again. The workhorse as ever. Now there's Gala players over that. Oh, it's coming. That's a Kelso penalty. So Kelso with a free play here. Exactly the, what they would want in this situation. Seven or eight metres from the gala line. Free play, referee's blown it up. So, big call for Kelso to make here. Depends how long's left, eh? Yeah, you'd imagine they'll be they'll be striving the Kelso captain to find out to the second how long's to go. But they've got options here, Kelso. They've had a you know they've had a fairly dominant scrum this afternoon. They could go at the corner of the line out. Doesn't appear that they're going to take try and take three points. Neil, what 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 would you do here? If it was definitely in front of the sticks, I probably would have took the three and you're guaranteed. It doesn't look like there's one left the way they're debating. Oh, and they've done the... No, it's full oh, time. it's full time. The referee must have fooled them. It was full time. And it's Kelso who are going to leave this top of the table clash with the spoils. And five points at that with the bonus point in the bag. What a game we have been treated here this to this afternoon. And Kelso director of rugby, Neil Hinnigan, with your impartial hat on, nonetheless, you must be delighted. I'm absolutely, honestly, so happy for these players because they've put so much work into the start of this season. And honestly, they deserve this wholeheartedly. 
We made similar mistakes that we've been making, and, and I mentioned that Gala punished us when Murray misses, but the character to come away and get the win and get five points up here is absolutely amazing. I must give credit to Gala as well. They made some match of it, and it could have went either way, right up until the... I mean, Kelso really grabbed the initiative for the last five, ten minutes, but I'll tell you, up until then, it was anyone's match, and Gala put on a great fight here today, and some of their older heads, Liam Scott, what a warrior. He'll be absolutely knackered tonight after his performance, and I feel for him because he's put a great captain's performance and he's come on the losing side and you know the, the Gala boys they'll come again Gala they, they, they really will they're a top team and uh, yeah we'll see what happens in the return at Pointer it'll be one to relish again but what a performance from Kelso there was many good performances in the team but a lot of character shown to get the win and that's the main thing there was loads to work on where you know it wasn't even probably our best performance but you know we, we, we did the little key things right Apart from a missed touch, which I've said about a hundred times, I apologise for. I just can't believe he did at that point. But apart from that, what a performance! Yeah, as the Gala players form the tunnel for these, for this Victoria Kelso outfit, we have been treated to a double header, a league and border league ding dong, and it is Kelso who emerge victorious by twenty-seven points to. 23, I think it finished in the end. It's Gala 23, Kelso 27, and back to Stuart. Well, what a match we've seen here today and uh, the end of 16 years of history. Kelso trying to uh, get that win at Netherdale. Well, they've done it today and uh, my goodness, there's been some scores today around the country. They're still coming in here and uh, let's have a look at uh, Curry against Hoyk at the moment. Curry 25, Hoyk 46. What a scoreline at the moment. Uh, that's still playing at Maleni Park. GHA 46, Jed Forest 36 is a latest score. Looks like Jed's going to miss out on that one the last we'd heard was Glasgow Hawks 8 Edinburgh Ackies 10 but that was a halftime score nothing new in since then Heritz Blues 28 Musselburgh 21 is a latest score uh, Mar 19 Selkirk 21 is a latest score we'll hopefully get some full uh, full times for you shortly you can say that Air is definitely gone full time Air 43 Aberdeen Grammar 5 uh, Melrose 29 GH uh, sorry 36 now GHK 17 is the latest score. That game kicked off at half past three. Watsonians 11, Dun D 12. And I think we can go to the Guides now for a full time report. It's Peebles against Glasgow. Aki's come in, Sam Matthews. And there we have a final score at the Guides. The heavens have now just opened in pure celebration as Peebles go top of the table in front of their own crowd. 36 points to 14 victory. Bonus point win for Peebles and the loss to Kirkcaldy, as I said, sees the Peebles men move to the top of national. Two. Final score, Peebles 36, Glasgow Academicals 14. When the weather's dreech and a storm's a brewing, you need a strong, windproof, quality umbrella delivered with good old fashioned customer service and at an affordable price. Up here in Umbrella Heaven, we say you tackle the ball, we'll tackle the weather. Umbrellaheaven.com for when the heavens open. Based in Gallish Hills, but covering the whole region and beyond, Borders Mortgage Hub is your one-stop shop for all things mortgage-related in the Borders. Visit us at bordersmortgagehub.com or call us on 01896 807 008. That's 01896 807 008. Borders Mortgage Hub. Mortgages for the Borders in the Borders. One, two, three, Hello, this is George Ingalls here, and I'm thrilled that my songs are now available on two albums, Anthology and Lockdown Blues. Late in the evening She's wondering what clothes to wear Both available on iTunes to download and stream I am the train, been gone since 69 George Ingalls Anthology and Lockdown Blues. Check them out now on iTunes and other digital sites. To commemorate the 7th anniversary of the opening of the Borders Railway, an 8 DVD box set is now available featuring the complete series Borders Railway from start to finish, plus the full hour and a half documentary Five Years On, which examines the possibility of an extension to Carlisle, plus extra features including a cab journey along the entire Borders Railway, all for the special price of just £14.99. 99, including post and packing. You can get your copy direct from hotdisk.co.uk slash shop. That's hotdisk.co.uk slash shop. The 8 DVD box set, The Complete Borders Railway, is available now. 
Hi, Nicky Walker here, Curriculum Learning Manager for Sports and Outdoor Activities at Borders College. Have you ever considered turning your passion for sport into a rewarding career? If so, then why not get in touch at borderscollege.ac.uk forward slash sport. Borders College, regionally focused, globally engaged. This is, this is Borders Rugby Special on Borders Rugby Radio. Yes, welcome back to uh, Netherdale and uh, Bruce McNeil's come up here. He's an absolutely delighted Bruce McNeil who's going to be talking to Robin Purdy right now. Yeah, he's grinning like a Cheshire cat up here is Bruce McNeil. And Bruce, you, you were fast out of the traps today. You look like men on a mission. Yeah, we were, to be fair. Uh, we knew we had to. <coughs> to come to a place like Netherdale and, uh, and no fire shots, you're not going to get much. So we knew that we had to come here, <coughs> no get into our shells and, and make sure that we... We left nothing in the pitch, and yes, the first 20 minutes we came out the shots, but I still think we let them back into the game. 12-6 uh, half-time, you know, we could have controlled the wind in the territory a bit better, but listen, the character there to come back from, from behind into the wind and that, it's just great feeling, great bunch of lads. Yeah, and you mentioned, you know, the fact that you went in a, or, or scored a couple of early tries and then, then Gala came back into it. Listen... Gala wasn't sitting top for no reason. They were always to come into that game, we knew that. We knew we'd be in an arm wrestle no matter what, but the main thing was we never went in our shells. We trusted our system, trusted our plays, trusted our teammates, and um, listen, it's paid off in the end, but a lot to work on. Let's not get too carried away. Yeah, and what was the chat at half time? Because it was, a, it was a fast, there was actually a fast start to the second half by Gala. To be honest, it was just to get our breath back because, you know, it was pretty frantic. Just press the reset button, nil nil. We knew that conditions was playing a part in this and we we're going into the wind in the second half. So just sticking to our structures, we've got a good game plan and um, when we stick to it, we look pretty decent. Sometimes when we deviate away from that, <coughs> it can put us under pressure, which it did in, at times. But listen, it's all about character coming to another day and we showed loads of that. Yeah, and you know, after they came back into it, you guys did regroup and got yourselves back into it and there was both leaders and youngsters to the fore. Yeah, listen, it's, it's a squad game, isn't it? And um, it's always got to be nip and tuck. Like, we know that. Um, and it's just, as I say, it's just staying in the fight. If we're in the fight with 20 minutes to go, we put the hard, yins, hard yards in Tuesday and Thursday. We know we've got the squad depth. <laughs> we know we've got the fitness and whatnot. So we just, put, we just trusted our trusted our systems and, uh, listen, it paid off in the end. And, you know, you have to say that, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a massive win. It's, it's a statement win, Bruce. How do you now go about keeping a lid on expectations from here? Go hard Tuesday night, simple as that. We enjoy tonight. We'll have a big party. I think Kev Austin said that he'd be buying the beers if we win today. So we'll have loads of beer the night. We'll enjoy tonight and we'll press reset come Sunday morning. We'll start thinking about um, Stirling County at Poinder next week. Simple as that. Yeah, it is indeed Stirling at Poinder. And, you know, you're you're, you're going to go into that and a lot of games now from here on in as favourites. I doubt that. I don't know if we're favourites, but there's pressure within the, within the squad that we're putting ourselves in standards. Um, listen, it's not just the boys that's here today, it's a squad team. The seconds are going phenomenally well, under 18s are going well as well. So the club's in a good place, but there's competition for places throughout. And um, boys know that, boys know that the seconds are playing well and that the, the positions, it's not a given from week in, week in, week out. They know that they have to give 100% of the Saturday, they could be playing for the twos uh, with somebody else stepping up. So listen, as I say, we'll enjoy tonight and come Sterling, we'll start working on them tomorrow. Well, Bruce McNeil, thank you very much. You leave here from Netherdale with a bonus point win. Brilliant. Good lad. There we are, Bruce McNeil. Very happy Bruce McNeil there, who's uh, going to enjoy his hot shower. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to attack me at the back of the stand. Do that on the pitch. Right. And uh, Liam Scott, the uh, uh, the gala captain, is just about, uh, in fact, to uh, come in and have a chat with Robin. So we'll uh, we'll get some more scores for you. And uh, over to you, Robin. Yeah, from one warrior to another. I'm joined by Liam at the back of the stand here. Liam, obviously, commiserations. You, you went 12-0 down reasonably quickly and you lost you and Dodds to boot you know that, that that's a big loss so early in the piece I I mean um, we, we were under the caution the first 20 minutes definitely I got sin binned as well which didn't really help our cause so um, yeah we were definitely under pressure and, and we went 12-0 down but look I thought the last 20 definitely 15-20 minutes of the, set, the first half we, we came into it a bit and uh, we made it a game and it was a it was a great game in the end unfortunately we were on the losing side so yeah, I was going to say you very much came into it in the in the second half of that first half, if you like, and you really were winning, or it would appear to us that you were winning a lot of the con the, the collisions, uh -huh. uh, just sort of couldn't convert that into tries in the first half. 
Aye, we were. Look, we knew it was going to be a, a really physical game, and um, and it was, and and I feel like we, we came out and we we met that, and 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 you know that was all we could do. Um, we, we were gutted, but there was just we had, we had flashes of brilliance where we were playing our structure and our shape was good, and we were getting multi-phase play, and then it, it, you know it would break down, and we couldn't follow through on it um, enough. So. Yeah, we're, we're we're disappointed, but we're um, we're looking forward to the to the tie there. Yeah, and you guys came out all guns blazing at the start of the second half. And you know, what what was the message in there at halftime? Um, was there a few words said? Yeah, no, the message was just look, we 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 were wanted to be at the end of that first half. We were in there half, we were piling on the pressure, and and we wanted to continue that. And uh, we knew we had to come out and be um, be ferocious and and uh, really up the physicality and be direct and run with intent. And uh, I feel like we did that, but Kelso met us. Credit to Kelso, they met us. They came out and they were uh, they were dogged, and you know they always are. It's always going to be like that. Um, but uh, credit to them, they came here and um, and they did well. And uh, and we were unfortunately on the on the wrong side of things. Yeah, and if somebody had asked me to pick a man of the match today, I probably would have went for Marius Tamasitis. He carried relentlessly, and he makes a lot of yardage. Just how Aye. big a player is he for you guys? Oh, he's look, listen. He's he's one of our uh, he's, he's one of our really good assets. It's great having a guy like Marius on your team because you know you can you can rely on him to suck in two, three, sometimes even four players, and uh, always break the gain line and unstoppable as you can see for five meters out. In so um, you know it's. He's invaluable, he really is, he really is. And looking forward to next week, the long old trip to Inverness, Highland away, that's going to be a reasonably tough encounter. I look, it's never easy to go to Inverness, um, the travelling takes it out of you and uh, you get up there and uh, you know it's always a big crowd and uh, they, they don't take long to get to get on your back, so, so no, it's always a challenge going up there, but that's what we want, that's what we need. We need to go up there and uh, effectively get back on the horse, so... So no, look, we're, uh, we're looking forward to it. Um, we've got to go, go and lick our wounds and then come back fighting at that and, and hopefully get back on the right track. Yeah, well, Liam, thanks very much for your no time. Uh, thanks, Robin. Commiserations and, right. yeah, you've more than played your part in this spectacle today. Thanks very much indeed to Liam Scott. So we've heard from Bruce McNeil and uh, from Liam Scott as well, uh, captain of Gala. We're uh, waiting for a full-term result still at Mileni Park. It's all pretty exciting stuff, but the last we'd heard it was uh, uh, Curry 25, Hoik 46. Now, we think, Robin, that that puts Hoik on top. However, Edinburgh Ackies have also won 13 points to eight in a low-scoring affair at Glasgow Hawks. You can probably do the, ma the maths for me, but uh, I think it's going to be pretty close, certainly one and two. Yeah, they're going to be one and two, and... Uh, yeah, we, we said it was a statement win by Kel, so that's a statement win, a massive statement win by Hoyk, and, and equally, you know, an equally as big a win for Edinburgh Ackies through in Glasgow, you have to say, you know, historically Ackies maybe not been rena renowned as a, you know, as a team that grinds them out, but yeah, big, big wins on the road for those two today, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very impressed for, by Hoyk, and I'm very, very pleased for Hoyk, that's an outstanding result today. Not so a good luck for Jed Forrest. 49-36. What a what a humdinger of a match there. They but they'll come away with um, well. Let me see. It'll be one a try bonus, obviously, for that. So just one point. GHA getting their first victory against a board team uh, for this uh, this campaign. Yeah, that sounds like it's been a, gut, a gutsy effort by Jed up there today. You know, they, they obviously would have much preferred to have came away with all of the spoils, but. Coming back down the road with a, a, a try bonus point, it's it's not a, it's not a catastrophe given where Jed are and where they're looking to you know looking to be in terms of you know looking up the table rather than looking down the table. That's not a disaster for Jed today. And what else we have? We have Heritage Blues 31, Musselburgh 26. Again, Musselburgh were like 28 nil down. We've seen them do this all season. They come back with a try bonus. I think they're third or the fourth, and that could well help them. But it puts Heritage above Musselburgh in the table, I think. Yeah, they've obviously guts it out. Uh, Musselburgh at home there today, and by the looks of things, they've come away with two points when, you know, early doors, they looked absolutely dead and buried, so yeah, that'll give them something to cling on there, obviously the basement boys, for the time being at least, but, you know, that'll, you would have thought, give them give them something to cling on to, and two points come the business end of the season could be, could be massive. Well, it's all over at Mileni Park, we can go now to Hugh Brown, it's Curry against Hoyk, latest or final score from Hugh. Leading by 16 points at the interval, 
Hoyk secured the win with two further tries courtesy of Callum Rennick and Dalton Redpath but Curry pushed them all the way and at one point there were just four points between the teams but at the end of the day it's Hoyk who emerged as victors and maintained their unbeaten run final score at Mulleny Park Curry 25 Hoyk 46 there is some win some it, win it certainly is June I'm just thinking as well that that's Curry chalked off away from home Curry have got to come to Mansfield as have Edinburgh Ackies and we we seen Hoyk first day of the season drop points at home in the draw to Selkirk and early days obviously we wondered back then you know it, it, might they go as far as they did last season well they've answered any of those kind of questions they they are good good value at the moment Hoyk so uh, we now have all the uh, Premiership results in, so let's uh, go over them. So it's a 46-25 win for Hoyk against Curry at Mulleny Park. GHA winning 49-36 against Jed Forrest. Glasgow Ackies 8, Edinburgh Ackies 13, uh, Heriot's Blues 34, Musselburgh 26, and Mar 19, Selkirk 28. I mean, that is an incredible result. Well. That's, um, I'm, I'm struggling, you know, if, if you were to, if you were asking me right now, what's the victory of the day that it's a it's a hard one to call uh hoik edinburgh he's selkirk that is an absolutely outstanding result through there by selkirk and they will be absolutely cock a hoop uh, i would not mind being on that bus journey back from troon this afternoon we better get scott white on the phone pretty quick before things uh, <laughs> deteriorate I would, I would get him now if i was you absolutely so that's fantastic from selkirk we'll be obviously uh, uh, doing the selkirk jed game and the selkirk hoik game at um, big games coming uh, riverside up, park it? next week we're going to be going to uh, riverside park jed forest against mar so again uh, some great battles between the two in national one in the past and now they're both premiership sides and uh, of course both Scoring points for fun. Mar sort of under undercooked a wee bit, but I mean that sets it up nicely because I mean Jed Forrest scoring loads and loads of points. Yeah, they're, they're, they're you know in that regard from an attacking sense they're on fire at the moment, Jed. And as you say, Jed and Mar have got a bit of history there. You know, there's sometimes been a bit of needle there between them in the past, and Jed will be targeting that game now. And who who would who would have thought it? Uh, you know, if you'd said at the start of the season which games will Jed be targeting, you know, they'll go after their home games, of course, but. It wouldn't have been a given, and it's still not a given, of course, but that is very much one that Jed will be looking to emerge with four points from, if not a bit more, as is their try-scoring form at the moment. Now, let's go into National 1, Air 43, Aberdeen Grammar 5. Aberdeen Grammar still looking for a win in their campaign. Uh, as we know, it ended here at uh, Netherdale Gala 23, Kelso 27, a victorious Kelso side winning for the first time here in 16 years. Latest we have from the Green Yards. Remember, it's a 3.30 kickoff because of the earlier match uh, being played on the same pitch in the Super 6 when uh, um, Southern Knights were 19 nil up at half time lost the game to Sterling Wolves by 21 points to 19 it's currently Melrose 43 but GHK putting up a bit of a fight 22 points for them now uh, the Stu Mel Highland game has finally got underway it's 5-3 um, to Highland at Inverleith at the moment the referee finally uh, managing to get to the ground uh, Sterling County 17 bigger 19 is a full time result and what's only 11 Dundee 17 I think again that result's been coming isn't it from Dundee yeah Dundee look you know a bit more upwardly mobile if you like than they they, they, they did right at the start of the season that's a big win for bigger that that steadies their ship a wee bit and yeah Melrose it looks like Melrose are going to emerge from five points there and you know it's a strange thing to say about Melrose uh, as a club but they're almost flying a wee bit under the radar at the moment but again another team that are looking up the table now rather than down it and you know they you fancy that Melrose could Mel Melrose are going to have a say in this title race in National 1 one way or another they've lost a couple of games already they it might be too much for them to claw back with only one team going up but you fancy them have a say now, only a few minutes being played, but it's now Stu Mel 8, Highland 5. And if it stays like that, my goodness, well, there's a long way to go, obviously. And it's going to be finishing in darkness, I think. But, uh, you know, that's, uh, that could be a very interesting uh, result that we'll be looking at uh, later on. But let's quickly go into National 2 and see what we've uh, got there, which is Carthur Queen's Park 25, Berwick 38. Great win for Berwick. Uh, Dumfries 34, Preston Lodge 14. can hardly believe that result with Dumfries down in ninth place. 
place today. Uh, the latest we have, it's not confirmed yet, but Hamilton Bulls 18, Falkirk 19. Again, Hamilton Bulls, uh, no win for them this season yet. Kirkcaldy 19, Newton Stewart 28. Their 100% record has gone along with uh, Galas today as well. So there's only Hoyk and Kelso in the top two divisions now undefeated. And Peebles winning 36-14, and we think they go top of the table, though we don't have the last way to bottom your uh, result in on that one but again uh, some really interesting uh, results coming in today yeah great to see Berwick picking up the win getting back on the horse very hospitable they were last week and Peebles great win for them and results have gone Peebles went uh, way today after a big win down at Berwick last week and yeah Peebles looking good value at the moment in that division OK, well, we will be back again next Saturday between 2 o'clock and 5 o'clock when we bring you live commentary from Riverside Park. Jed Forrest will be taking on Mar. Hope you can join us then. But for now, from me and the team here at Borders Rugby Radio, a very good afternoon.